The link in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support witch hunts or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take it or leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. I actually loathe getting involved in drama, but here we are. Okay, so I was gonna cover this with Loud and Styles, but given he's a little on the busier side lately, I guess I'll take up the reins alone and just talk about the situation on my own. Because the more that we wait on this to happen, the more that'll pop up and then this situation will continue to spiral out of hand. Also, since Pink Robot doesn't want to do it, you know, someone's gotta say something. May as well be the person with the history of wanting to help Joshua because like, yeah, been seeing this behavior of yours, Josh, and not gonna lie, I've been rather disappointed in you lately. So let me go through and completely deconstruct everything about this drama. If you're on the newer side of this channel and you don't know exactly who Joshua is, allow me to explain to you by quoting my was gonna be co-op partner real quick. <clears throat> In order to talk about Joshua, one must go back into the past to see how he came to be. Josh started out like the majority of us, a teenager who got sucked into this new site called YouTube. His first account, which was Joshua8428, was born, and at first the account wasn't anything special, a Sonic fan doing Sonic related content with the occasional rant video in a Sonic sprite series that he would be on and off with. What caught the eye of many commentators was two things. One, he was a Sonic fan, and two, he was a Sonic fan who liked to recolor Sonic characters and claim them as his original characters. What set him apart from many of Sonic recolors who were trolls and or very emotional people who would strongly defend their choices and characters due to many people like Blackbuster Critic calling them Sonic fags, but I digress. Joshua was different in a sense. You see, Joshua would respond to many videos on him no matter the video, whether someone legit was trying to give him critique or wanted to get their seven minutes of kicking a Sonic fan like everyone else wanted to do. He would respond. The first video that made Joshua noticed by the community was a video response to a user named Supersonic407 in which he commentated on him stopping his so Sonic Halo sprite series. To sum it up, Supersonic, or Ryan, was discussing his sprite series as he was doing at the time and how he was stopping, in which Joshua responded very negatively about the stop of his sprite series, coming off as an obsessive, which started his bandwagon. One of the videos Loudon can remember where his bandwagon status was sealed was when he responded to a video of someone making fun of his avatar by pointing out his laziness for having a Silver the Hedgehog recolor, in which Joshua responded with, I am not a recolor. Those words started the bandwagon, and it was all hands on deck from the word go. Almost every video Josh had on its channel was commentated on, including his sprite series, written which people made YouTube poops and memes out of. His Joshua8428 account got a lot of traction, but not in the way he wanted it. Even in his comment section, he would respond with the same aggression that he would show in his videos, even going as far as to sometimes start the confrontation. It was rare, though. Another infamous video that Loudon wishes was still around was when he made a video challenging someone to a one-on-one -on -one duel in Halo because this person got his password to his YouTube account. Granted, he could still get into his account as the person didn't lock him out or anything, but Joshua was still freaking out, understandably so. Joshua was a bandwagon until 2012 when a majority of people spoke up about how tired they were about seeing videos on Joshua. Because of these videos and everyone agreeing, the video ceased and Joshua went on with himself alongside many others. That is until 2016. In 2016, Joshua wound up coming back to bandwagon hood through merely just making bad videos and people wanting to harp on him because he was Joshua. This is what started the infamous blob that ate everyone, previously known as the Joshua Tree of 2016. These videos primarily showed a sign of deconstructive criticism at Joshua's expense and eventually were all covered by me in a very dated display, basically telling everyone to cut it out and let Joshua breathe a bit. Afterwards, I checked some of his scripts, helped them out when I could, and even co-oped with him sometime in early 2017. Things were looking up for Joshua until he wanted to rip off a plagiarist known as Lily Orchard by making a series called Glass of Orange Juice in reference to Lily's own Glass of Water ranking series. After that point, I stopped keeping a close eye on Joshua and apparently that was a mistake because he's devolved in a way I had not previously seen anyone devolve during 2018 and 2019. Because by 2020, he rebranded as the Nintendo Switch Gamer Dude and was noticed by the commentary community again for his bad videos. One of the commentators that took note was Luxter, someone who Joshua seemingly has a grudge against given how he's reacted to Lucky in the past something I've even taken notice myself of in my worst of 2020 list. One could accuse him of doing that spitefully, and within reason too, considering the broader context of Colby House's history with Luxter and Zinni this year where Josh got into some extremely toxic mindsets, especially towards Luxter. This is the problem I have with your commentaries. You ignore information you leave in to just discredit someone. Your Pokemon list chain commentary is a good example of this. 
I could probably understand why you leave them in. The only problem is you're only going after the experienced to white knight the inexperienced. This could work if it's just one game in the franchise, but you like to put the minority on a megaphone and have them shout the frustrations, though, it makes sense why. You are below the thousandth mark and think sticking to minorities is a good idea, though Josh seems to like it. But that doesn't mean others will. My advice is stick to low rank YouTubers and debunk them. Though, promotion should help make you better than me in which you will respond to this if that was the case. Why this grudge exists? I don't know, but it started everything that we're covering today. Well, almost everything. There is something else we'll cover later, but we'll come back to that when we get there. For now though, I think we should begin at the beginning of the spiral into the newest Colby House situation the thread on Luxter's video on Lundata. For context, the absolute degenerate, formerly known as Megatron BBZ, made a review of the Hasbin Hotel song Addict. Former commentator Lundata covered that video, to which Luxter covered that. Joshua took issue with this video because he takes issues with Luxter's mere existence, and left a comment on that video that kind of spiraled into... Yikes. Territory. Pink Robot has already covered this thread in a video on her channel, but not only did she not cover the full thing, and some of what we'll be covering is beyond what she covered, but just in general we should probably go over this for the sake of setting up the context. I will also have to call out Luxter, because when I asked him for screenshots of this conversation, he not only missed a few comments that had read more buttons on them, so there are some comments that just abruptly end, but also he didn't even give me the entire conversation. I don't think it was deliberate, but I noticed the files go from screenshot 230 to screenshot 234. That's just something we'll keep in mind as we continue on. Actually, after putting the rough draft of this video into the Cloud Palace, Luxter heard my callout and gave me the last screenshots of the threat that I did not have. Unfortunately, I won't be using them, barring a singular one that we'll come back to later, as I already set this video up to call back to the videos already talking about the situation as much as I can. However, he did eventually rectify the mistake, in case y'all were worried. As I said though, we'll come back to that one particular screenshot when it becomes important, as there will be a lot of post points in this video to keep things up to date or to add on to things talked about previously. And that's where the new Sona design will come in. On that note, if you do want to watch Pink Robot's video on the situation, link below. Yeah. You took the trolls bait. I wouldn't have too much problems with this if you did a extremely difficult commentary and not a simple one I can figure this out. It just goes to show that you are lazy when it comes to commentaries. At least on the points. At least my recent commentaries have more insight. Do you even link your sources? It's so long, I forgot. See, this is how Joshua wanted to start this thread, and I don't at all get why. Like, first of all, I'm 99% sure we're all past the it's a troll mantra to the point whether or not you cover a troll is practically redundant by this point, as long as you're having fun doing it. But also because what constitutes a simple and difficult commentary? 1. Linda is not a troll. She just wanted to use text-to-speech. 2. Gatekeepy much? Luxter may be in a drought of material and this is the best he could find. Even if he covered an extremely difficult video, as you put it, that'd give Luxter trouble since the material is, well, extremely difficult. Covering easy material isn't lazy, it's better than nothing. 3. Read the description. 1. Ladada's not a troll. I may have had problems with this video, but she is someone who has been trying to improve her commentaries as evidenced by what she said near the end of Doodle's triumph on her. Cutting in again with a post point to kinda do what Pink Robot did in her video for those who chose to not watch hers. Though seriously recommend it, it's really good. In her video she played clips whenever timestamps or other videos were alluded to in the thread, so I'm gonna do that here with the point Luxter is making. So Luxter is alluding to this part in my commentary on Lindata. You had some of your own words to say, and I believe this would be the absolute best platform for those words to be on, so take it away. First of all, there's a few things I want to clear up about this video in question. The first one, I'm bringing this one up because it's quickest, quickest to, to state, because the reason why this was in six parts was simply because of the fact that it was in six parts because I was transitioning from from let's playing to commentating. So if I was going to go back to let's playing, I probably would have wanted it to not stick out like a sore thumb compared to the rest of my gaming content, which is why all my stuff is done with gaming footage actually, because it just respects where I came from. And then 
Second of all, I'm also making this video to apologize in a more public fashion so people know about it and they'll be able to take it seriously. So, Gale Force, first of all, I am extremely sorry about how this video was 60% ad hominems towards you and your videos. So, gotta say I'm sorry for that, just so everyone knows it. Um, TP and Zarek, I'm extremely sorry to you for taking almost everything that I had, that you guys had said at face value and not going further into things I could have said. So, yeah. So, I'm not making this video because I want doodles to go easy on me because quite honestly I don't just go absolutely all out because otherwise it's just not going to be any fun for anyone to watch. Me or me, my friends, whoever. But still, I just wanted to put this out just so people actually see it and they know that I'm sorry for this video and I'm trying to move on. Y'all cut it? Good. Back to the program. Two, simple commentaries are not inherently bad. Digestible content is a thing and there are people that enjoy short and to the point videos. Three, do you even link your sources? Yes, in the description, right under the degree chain. Joshua. I just think you're just being biased with how much you dislike the video because you don't like Luxter. Also, might I add that if you think Linduster is a troll due to text-to-speech, you are a hypocrite since you also use text-to-speech in your commentaries, reviews, etc. To add on, I asked Linda a while ago why she is text-to-speech, and it's mainly because of dysphoria, and thought her current voice doesn't pass, which is wrong because her voice is 100% valid for a woman, but it seems like now she found a solution. I think she pitches up her voice now. I mean, even if she was, you can still cover a troll. All it changes is the target won't take the advice given. It could still entertain people or show others what not to do. Even then, Lindata is not a troll. Completely fair and reasonable reason to use text-to-speech. At Luxter, I may not have proof that she is a troll, but just because someone said they'll get better, doesn't mean they're not trolls. Hero is a good example of this. 1, 2. Try imagining you got bland chicken and rice or fries or a type of food. Yeah, it is easy to digest, but the flavor is usually the biggest thing when making a recipe. Otherwise, someone would ask for some sauce. Which there wasn't enough of. 3. I mean your information to whatever you're quoting. Not what you're commentating on and so on. It's really hard to look at this comment section throughout and take especially this comment seriously when your obvious distaste for Lucky overshadows any rational thought, and we'll come back to that. Furthermore, using GyroHedgy453 is probably not the best example to a bunch of newbies in the community because Lord knows there's probably such few of them who would even know who he is, as demonstrated by Pink Robot's point on this exact comment. Hero is a good example of this. Ow. I get that this is a comment thread but you can expand upon your points and elaborate as to what this gyro character did that may match up with Lindata's actions. We don't instinctively know to whom you're referring to, so it's up to you, the debater, to fill us in. Further furthermore, you saying you have no proof of Lindata being a troll makes the rest of your comment dubious at best. You continue making this troll comment but with flimsy at best arguments backing it up. Why should we at all take what you say seriously here? At Rhino SCE used to. Not anymore. But Rhino's point would still stand. If you had in the past used text-to-speech in your videos, then you would know that text-to-speech doesn't intrinsically indicate a troll. Unless you're about to tell me all of your Nintendo Switch Game Dude commentaries plus your apology video about this whole situation is a troll, and in which case, while I would believe you, I would have some objections to be raised regarding this whole thing. I feel like you're more of a troll compared to your accusation, to be honest. At Fractured Light, yeah, if they were kids. That would be one thing. But with adults, it's redundant. If you hear the same thing over and over again, it gets annoying. They didn't ask for this, and yet they got it. Time and place is a factor though. So okay, but it's more of a mixed thing than anything. Anyone gonna tell Joshua that Lindata is like, 15? At Blazin Hope to be fair, trolls can execute it right without being obvious. The longer they keep trolling though, the less effective it becomes. Though trolls can also be entertaining if they aren't receiving it. 
though when they are receiving it over and over, they see them as jokes. Armored Cat comes to mind. Granted, he sometimes does take. Shut up, Joshua. None of this debunks Tippy's reply. She was just saying that you came off more as a troll than you claim Lindada to be. Also, according to Loudon, Armored Cat wasn't even a troll, but instead just kind of an asshole. Also, since Joshua's comment got cut out in Lucky Screenshots, allow me to use Pink Robot's video again to address the rest of Joshua's comment here. To be fair, trolls can execute it right without being obvious. The longer they keep trolling though, the less effective it becomes. Though trolls can also be entertaining if they aren't receiving it. Though when they are receiving it over and over, they see them as jokes. Armored Cat comes to mind. Granted, he sometimes does take it a bit too far, but that's irrelevant. If you acknowledge your argument as irrelevant here, why make it to begin with? Why not just leave it at the crux of your point being that trolls can execute their trolling behavior without being obvious about it? Like, even if we were to presume what Loudon told me about Armored Cat to be false, then there's still the issue of the superfluousness this counter-argument elaboration has that Joshua even acknowledges himself. That's like putting in a post-production point just to say that your previous counter-argument was incorrect. One, I may not have proved that she's a troll. So your entire point's a baseless assumption then. Good to know. Two, the flavor is usually the biggest thing when making a recipe. Are you sure? Because with commentaries, I thought points were what mattered most. And nothing I said in this video was wrong, and if I did miss something, you're not pointing out where. If you don't find my video entertaining, that's fine, but that doesn't make a simple commentary bad by default. Three, the only two things I quote from this video are the definition of haram and lyrics from the song being mentioned, both of which are shown under sources. One, it would be redundant with both. Age has no factor in this particular case. Either way, I wouldn't call it redundant just because the target wouldn't take the advice due to multiple reasons I explained. Also, doing them watching commentaries is fun for some people. Is there really a reason you shouldn't be allowed to do a commentary for fun? I don't know if the over and over thing was elaboration, but if so, that's not the definition of redundant. Two, does anyone ask for a commentary though? Hitting someone's video isn't something you need to ask to do. In most cases, those making content are already open to the idea that their videos can and will be critiqued. Also, consider that Lindata is a commentator. That means she knows this better than most new or smaller YouTubers. Three, elaborate on time and space being a factor. Overall, I'm yet to see an actual reason why you can't cover a troll video, and again, Lindata is not a troll, and you assuming she is baselessly and trying to use that as an actual point is really dumb. At Luxter, hey, here's the funny thing, there is no way of spotting a troll unless they admit it or if it was freaking obvious. Reverse can be said about it as well. 1, 2. Even some people need to put more flavor, otherwise you're just eating a hot dog with just ketchup. While it is a subjective thing, it could have been better. 3. Have you done this in past videos though? Alright, first of all, if there's no way of spotting a troll unless they admit it or it's obvious, then why did you come in here belligerently getting on the Luxter's case about supposedly covering a troll? Mind you, this is a rhetorical question, we can already see it's because of your strange grudge against Lucky. But secondly, I can tell you're asking Luxter if he cites his sources in other videos, and not only does he do so when it's needed, as seen by pretty much most, if not all of his videos, probably should elaborate on this, just on the basis that I am making a positive claim that Lucky typically cites his sources here. So here's the one on Lindata. You can see the sources for the Addict music video and definition of Haram, both of which Luxter used in his video. Go back one and you have the video on Nekokoda. Here he cites has been hotel directly as a source of information. Here's the Umbrus one. Technically, there's no outside sources, but he does still link degrees 5 through 1 in his description to call back to the degrees of what Umbrus is commentating on. In its own right, these are citations. And the more you keep going back, the more that you can see that Luxter typically does cite his sources. Here's the ones in his Josh Scorcher description. Here's his citations for his videos on Cross, Daz Reviews, P.K. Russell, other P.K. Russell video, all of these from Twipple Trouble, Dick Sponge, like you can even find citations to videos that he's covering as far back as the Dark Commentator video he did in 2018. So yeah, no, Luxter does typically cite his sources, unlike what can be said about your commentaries. Or at least the ones I can pinpoint as a response commentary and not just a general topic commentary since those aren't what Luxter typically does on his channel. From your 
latest five, I think. Basically, the videos on Sonic Shadow, Mr. Inter, Idub, Zenny, and Lucky himself. Most of what we see in your descriptions are predominantly social media links, with at most some extra links to the original video and prior degrees if needed, similarly to Luxor's commentary on Umbris. With the best case scenario being that one extra extra link to a film theory video used in your video on Inter. But that's still one out of your most recent five, whereas Luxter has one out of his most recent five where all he has is contextual citation. So not only is it wrong to get on Luxter's case for supposedly not citing his sources, when he quite clearly does, but it's also very hypocritical when you yourself do not do that same thing. But also, it wouldn't exactly matter here since you were asking for citations on this video where they exist. That was one of your points of bitching in the first comment, remember? At Fractured Light I actually looked it up, and it's just another way of saying extra. Negatively. What I meant to say that it's repetitive. And yes, he parrots what he said multiple times. Which can be redundant. I've seen the simplest of things before, and he's just recapitulating. And do you want to know the funny thing? Repeating the same formula without enough substance can get annoying. Also, he's not a musician. He should leave the songs to experts. Where's your evidence that he's not musically inclined? That is what he doesn't realize. He, could have said it's flat because most of it is monotone and little change of the pitch. Flat could have been more elaborated on since monotone and flat are similar. I'm flat on my vocals. She could have just said that but it's possible she is not an expert. You see, that's why I think she's a troll. Because she, while not an expert, knows what she's talking about. There is a reason why you show and tell. It gives you the grasp. You're assuming again, and it contradicts a previous core message you placed within your previous replies. Oh, it's impossible to tell if someone's a troll or not, but I think this person is for sure a troll because they're not an expert but knows what they're talking about. By the way, this isn't a typo. Within Pink Robot's video, we can see Joshua meant to type this as his basis of why he feels Lindata is a troll. Because Lindata knows what they're talking about without being an expert, which... How this makes any goddamn sense is beyond me. Redundant just means unneeded. Also, give me an example of a point Luxter repeated. No, you're completely wrong. Lentata is the troll. Sure, her saying she's not the troll doesn't mean she's not the troll. Do you know what doors prove? That she is the troll. The fact that she wants to improve. It knows when she screws up. An actual troll would never do that. At Blaze the movie fan Giro admits to screwing up and wants to get better in the past. I had people say to me that I gave them constructive criticism and they took it to heart. The only thing is that action speaks louder than words. And all I see is words from her. Has she done any of the things? Alright, I will admit that's a good point. Please, I get it. And honestly, bless your heart for trying to remain civil, but it comes across as a little naive to concede to this being even remotely a good point. For starters, again, there's a lack of evidence to Joshua's claim regarding Gyro Hedgy wanting to get better. Without it, only people like you or Loudon would be able to understand where this is coming from, whereas everyone who he's trying to convince he's not wrong to, would not. Second, actions speak louder than words. This, this is just Blaze of Arcana's 2017 logic towards Joshua. The very same thing that we co-opt to argue against. Slight correction, but what I'm referring to here is a video YouTube Dude and I did in 2017 on a commentator known at the time as Blaze of Arcana, who did a commentary on Joshua and I's co-op on Mr. Demon Slayer called Back to Our Roots. That video went on to be one of the worst commentaries of 2017. Not my video, but Blaze's video. Okay, this made me realize something very, very important here. What has Joshua done? Done. He's pretty much barely improved a whole lot in the last few months, fail when he tries to do something right, and the kicker of this being that him acting severely immature towards criticism. One might say this video aged like a fine wine and it's quite unfortunate that I have to agree looking at Josh today. Had that video come out this year, 
Man, it would be harder to argue. Still think it was trash at the time, though. Literally point for point. Has Lindata does any of the things to fix the criticisms against her? Has Joshua done any of the things to fix the criticisms against him? Bite me. Does that mean I tried helping a troll in 2016 from the worst goddamn commentary chain ever? Was all this shit just a waste of my time? Come on, Joshua. Okay, I took a look at the content, and he has gotten better. Which begs to question why would he use text to speech? Josh, Umbris literally explained why earlier in this very thread she would do so. Just read, damn it. Furthermore, notice by this point Josh starts referring to Lindata by he him pronouns after this point, and actually persists to argue that Lindata isn't trans without a shadow of a doubt. Obviously, I'm not very happy by this. Couldn't imagine why. At Fractured Light 1. Okay. 2. This is bland. This is bland. This is bland. That's what he's been repeating. It just now occurred to me that Joshua here is accusing Luxter of calling Lindata's video boring, when I cannot recall a singular instance of him doing so. You're gonna have to give me some evidence for that one, Colby House. 3. Okay. I don't know where I was going with this. 4. You've lost me there. Check your last argument. In fact, look back at the conversation, cause you must be confused. Look at what Ambres said in reply to me. Also, Lindutta's pronouns are she, her. I rewatched the video and Luxa doesn't repeat the point. Give me timestamps. For number 4 you said that Lindata was a troll because she knew a bit about the topic but wasn't an expert. Your evidence was her using the wrong word, so I turned it around on you. 4.30 5.45 And 10.42 So to quickly go over each of the points Joshua alludes to here, at 4.30, Luxor's point is such. Degenerate said that the song sounded flat, showed clips of angels singing, and stated how that was probably why they autotuned him so heavily on the high notes. The explain card doesn't really work here since he's reviewing a mainly auditory medium. The most you can do are highlight points where the singing is particularly flat, but, well, that's exactly what Degenerate did here. So how would he be able to further explain this? If the singing is flat, then the singing is flat. This is a point in direct response to Lindata asking for elaboration to Degenerate saying Angel Dust's singing in the song Addict was flat. Lindata asked for elaboration as to how the singing was flat, and Luxor goes on to say that you can't really elaborate much more on that. Flat in this context just means the singer is off pitch, there ain't much more detail needed there. At 545, Lucky's point is... He did to say why though. He thought the singing was flat. Just because he didn't explain how the singing was flat, which, again, how is that even possible to do, that's still an explanation for disliking the song. All it really amounts to is Luxter saying that Degenerate did in fact elaborate enough on his point as to why he doesn't like the song, surely by saying the singing is flat. Even if there wasn't further elaboration, we can still understand as to why Degenerate doesn't like the song. At 10.42, his point is... Then what were all the digs about how his complaints were subjective supposed to mean? This one is totally unrelated to the point of the singing being flat or not, as this is literally Luxter asking what Lindata's digs at Degenerate's subjectivity is supposed to do in the context of what Lindata was saying here. Regardless of the context of what Lindata was saying, this is not the same point as either of the previous two. There's no way you can misconstrue this latterist point as something that can be compared to the previous two. Though honestly, none of these are really in-context repetitious on their own. He says the sentence, the singing is flat, a few times, but given the context to those uses of sentence structure, they're not the same. At 4.30, the actual point is that you can't elaborate on something like the singing being flat. At 5.45, the point was that Degenerate already explained why he doesn't like the song, and at 10.42 was a list of things that Degenerate said about the song. At worst, it's two similar points, Josh. He repeated that the song was flat. How are you this naive? So? Just because he repeated a singular sentence that was the crux of Lindata's poor counter-argument to Degenerate doesn't mean the video itself was repetition considering the context of each of these instances are different. No, he's a guy. If he was a girl, he would have a feminine voice. His text-to-speech is. If you're say he's transgender, then show proof. Hey Josh, guess who also has a masculine voice but would still prefer to go by she-her pronouns? I'll give you a hint. We worked together in 2017. Like, sure, I'm a lot more open about being trans than maybe Lindata is on her channel. Fine. 
But when Umbris, someone who is actually friends with Lindata, says that the reason she used text-to-speech in this video was due to reasons of dysphoria, then arguing this part comes off as a little transphobic. At Fractured Light Um. Which is it? Knowing what she's talking about or using the wrong word. Because it's the... Let these screenshots kind of halt here and then pick up later in the conversation. If you want to know what you're missing, I'm going to play some of Pink's video on the situation to quickly fill in the gaps here. Sorry, Pink Robot. I, I mean, I just... I'm trying to get context here. Um. Which is it? Knowing what she's talking about or using the wrong word. Because it's the former, not the latter. Look back at the conversation. Looking back, I never used that as evidence. All I said was she knows what she's talking about and called her a troll because of it. Alright, so here's where that extra screenshot Luxter sent me comes in handy, because both the initial screenshot as well as pink screenshots don't have the full thing. Continuing on, we see Joshua saying that he acknowledges he's made a mistake within presuming Lindata was a troll, but considering what comes after when Pink Robot made her video, I won't lie and say this doesn't ring incredibly hollow. More on that later. I was explaining why he repeated the word. You said he was being repetitive, which would only be a real problem if the point was the same. And you only found three instances in a 12 minute video, so once per four minutes. Flat could have been more elaborated on since monotone and flat are similar. I'm flat on my vocals. She could have just said that, but it's possible she is not an expert. You see, that's why I think she's a troll. Because she, while not an expert, knows what she's talking about, say X instead of or to elaborate on Y, this is why you're a troll, you know enough but aren't an expert. Dude, stop. It still happened. I don't care what you think just own up to your mistakes and put it to rest. I have some very choice words about this comment in particular, and you'll probably understand why the more we go into this video. Okay, that's transphobic as hell, Joshua. Not everyone uses TDS or a voice changer to sound feminine, and even then, why do you think she uses a female TDS voice in the video shown in Luxter's video? And even then, Dude Lutton says in the start of her 3HR commentary that Lindata goes by female pronouns. Actually, I don't think I ever specified what Lindata's pronouns were in that video. I just said that she didn't go by he, him pronouns, or that our pronoun game could have been a little off because of it. Which, yes, would heavily imply that Lindata is trans in some way, shape, or form, but I don't believe this one is entirely right. Before we get into the video, I want to follow up my usual disclaimer with another disclaimer. We had started this project back in May of 2019 and through scheduling errors and just overall everything that's happened this past year, things may seem very odd. I know our target has gone through a brand change and I think the pronoun game we have throughout this video might not be entirely accurate either. Plus the fact that the target has disowned the video, most people would probably just scrap a video by this point and I'll fully state everything that went into making this video is going to be an inconsistent mess. However, I want to preface this by saying the only reason we're still doing this video at this point in time is because the target themselves has been eagerly waiting for it to come out for some time and is still okay with us covering it. So yeah, minor correction on Rhino's end. You are being so arrogant right now that it makes me think you feel you can't be wrong. Shut up and sit down. This argument is literally nothing, you're just saying I'm wrong with no explanation. He said one word three times in a 12 minute video. That's not a problem, it's a subjective nitpick. How about because she's a fictional character and not the actual person? I'm calling him a he. Unless he's truly transgender, I will call him as such. Well that's obviously false since Umbris is literally right there telling us that Lindata used text-to-speech due to suffering from gender dysphoria and you still thought of her as playing a character and using that as an excuse to misgender her. Come on Josh, I can read, can you? Also, no, it's not transphobic since we aren't sure if he is what he actually is. Again, I am willing to accept that if he says so. And no, his character doesn't count. I almost want to go the route of just saying okay transphobe and calling it a day. Seriously, if you're that uncertain about someone's pronouns, just use they them pronouns. It's really not that hard. Nitpicks aren't inertly wrong. Yeah, I guess. But they could also be so small that they're not even issues. Here's an idea. Don't flip flop on your saying. It either means nothing or it's a nitpick also, it's a sentence. 
He just said it was flat, that's not a word. Joshua, that is not the crux of Fractured Light's argument, and you know it. Regardless of if it's a sentence or a word, you're still overblowing the repetition of Lucky stating that the singing is flat, context be damned. This is a non-issue when you consider the context mentioned earlier from Fractured Light, Pink Robot, and, well, now myself as of this video. Let me put it this way. WTF do you think everyone else has been saying her she etc when talking about Lindata in this goddamn comment champ? We aren't calling her a female because of her character, we are doing it because she's trans. It's a subjective nitpick stop strumming. The issue is the nitpick is not only extremely subjective, but it is effectively a non-issue. Also when I said means nothing, I was referring to you telling me to learn from my mistakes which did mean nothing. Also, it does not matter whether it was a sentence, it changes nothing, you were prior only complaining about the usage of the word flat. Aight, we all caught up? Cool, back to my screenshots. Here's an idea, tone down the aggression. You're digging for reasons to hate Luxta's video for... some reason. Lindata is transgender, literally look at anything with her in it. At Fractured Light Hearn, no, I already admit he wasn't covering a troll. I just find it to be as bland as a hot dog with just ketchup now. It's you I have a problem with. You aren't letting go of the fact that I hold a grudge with him. I don't hold grudges for very long. And the funny thing is you have every reason to drop the subject. Yet you want punishment. Even if doesn't come off that way. So, you admit that this is a grudge against Luxter, which is gonna be really annoying when we cover his follow-up videos later in this video, but at the moment, we'll hold that to the side. But you also admit to not holding grudges for too long, despite the fact that you have been seemingly holding the grudge against Luxter now for about a year. That's not even covering how you're going on to act like a victim of circumstance, despite the fact that this was really only you perpetuating this drama. But we'll come back to that. At Rhino SCE Proof, or are you just trying to come off as right without even trying? Show your evidence. Don't just say he is without showing it. Rhino literally alluded to the very try-op that I did with TP and Gale on Lindata where we say the pronoun game is different than he him. What do you mean show proof? It's literally right there in his comments. At Fractured Light no, you're just grasping at straws. Why does it matter what you said it was a subjective nitpick? Dude, let it go. You asked me where my point came from and I answered. Didn't know answering a question was wanting punishment. Also your grudge with Luxter isn't something I brought up. I said Luxter's video. You said the reason why you disliked Luxter's video was because he repeated a sentence. To which I brought up he had a different reason all three times. And getting technical it was worded differently each time. And a subjective nitpick isn't enough to call a video bad, you said shit like it being bland and acted like your problems or objective issues. That let it go is ironic given that you had no reason to respond to my comment yet did anyway. Just as an aside, how do I want punishment exactly? At Fractured Light Stop. I don't care what you said, just stop. Or I'll report you for spamming. And here we see Joshua backed into a corner without any further arguments and resorting to threats and shouting down his opponents. Man, Josh, I would have expected you to be better than this. The worst part is, is that we're not even close to done, as I've kept alluding to all segment. That said, we are done with this reply threat. It does continue with Fractured saying that flagging his reply for spam would be an abuse of YouTube's report system, which... It would be. This dude called the Insane Critic, who is apparently dating Lindata, comes in to correct Josh on Lindata being trans. And Luxor steps in trying to mitigate the conflict by conceding to Josh with a agree to disagree, mostly to get him to shut up and you can kinda tell given the way Lucky worded his last comment, before deleting the whole thread so as more bickering doesn't spam his own notifications. From there, we move on to the next segment of this video. Our favorite wild card of the CC came in and did her own take on this thread, and called Joshua out for saying a bunch of transphobic remarks. To be honest, it's one of my favorite commentaries of the year. But Josh seemed to disagree since he left not one, not two, but three really goddamn long comment threads between him and, well, Mostly fractured light on Pink's video, and as such, covering those will kind of be required to give a full idea as to why we're even talking about this situation to begin with. 
starting with the earliest thread and going on from there. You know what I have to say about it? No you. You weren't in this conversation, why don't you try to not start drama? I'll give you 5 minutes to take it down or I'll flag the video. Luxter's video didn't involve you either. I stand by this, Luxter's video didn't involve you. You don't get to bitch when someone comes in and calls you out. Way to assume intent and pin the blame on someone else. No, you. So are you going to full slag a video because they called you out? Okay. By the way, a video like this does not start drama. Continuing to respond only for your situation to be unresolved, that is starting drama. Threatening people to take down videos or else you will attempt to do so by force, that is starting drama. Reacting immaturely to someone addressing your mistakes, misinformation, and or invalid statements? That is starting drama. Look in the mirror and take a deep breath. I think you need to calm down. The number five minutes, Joshua. Flagging the video is only going to end poorly for you, dude. As the community's foremost expert on Know You, allow me to share my two thoughts. You were not a part of the original video that Luxter covered. Know You. You want to falsely flag a video down when Pink Robot only covered comments. No you. Furthermore, it's been at least an hour since this comment was posted. The video had not been taken down, neither by Pink Robot's own admission, nor by any attempts to flag it down. No you. Joshua, you're better than this. I know it. I've seen it before. Nintendo Meta Runner, try not to start shit challenge. Impossible. No you! Wait. But didn't you do the same thing? A commentary is inserting yourself into a conversation, usually without the permission of the target. I don't see how it's starting drama. Remember when I said you have a bias against me? You're showing it here. Yeah, uh, I don't really get how arguing against the initial comment where he screams at Pink for not being a part of a conversation he was also not a part of is showing bias either. I know for a fact that Pink Robot is mostly a troll. And this trolling is actually harassment. So yeah, go and harass the person who was just stating his opinion when all you have to do is acknowledge that you understand where I'm getting at or just say nothing. And yet I'm the one with the bias. I'll give you a chance to cease this childish behavior or I'll false flag anything involving me. And don't bother point out the irony in that statement. You continued it, you're going to end it? Oh my god, shut up Joshua. First and foremost, Pink Robot hasn't been a troll since 2017. Her video on Kungi Muller basically says that. Hello, this is Pink Robot. I appreciated that you all did not freak out during the test videos. I had been watching you all silently as another account and whenever I see people claiming that the commentary community is full of autistic spurks who don't know how to deal with trolls, I was wanting to test that for myself. Thank you Gloose. Master TP10 and Doodle Tones for demonstrating however, that you can still have fun while commentating on someone who was trying to get your reactions. However, now I wish to get serious and make videos pointing out actual problems I'm seeing hang around the community. Plus, Pink herself, in the video that this comment is left on, elaborates on that. To cite next Guzman and Master TP10, when I was trolling the commentary community in 2017, they did a video on me because it had entertained themselves. They thought it was fun. So that begs the question, why did we cover it anyways? Because we thought it was fun. Seriously, for how intentional the bad points were, me and Gwiz still had a lot of jokes going when we first watched it. So what if this commentary may end up doing the very things trolls tend to want, giving them attention? If I'm enjoying myself, I don't mind. We all win. Unless you're somehow not a troll, in which case your arguments were bad and you could feel bad. A lot of commentators presumably do these deconstructions on the basis for entertainment, yes, however, that doesn't instinctively mean that it inherently is exclusively made with the intent to entertain an audience. This is her literally stating that she used to troll to get a reaction out of people and enjoyed how Gwis and TP reacted. So you don't even have the benefit of doubt of needing to have watched an unrelated 40 minute video. It's right there in the video that you obviously didn't even fucking watch before making this comment. Also, threatening to silence your opposition is only going to make people want to bring up more objections against you, with grounds of doing so. Like, bro, I hope you don't actually plan on doing that else the entire community is going to be on your ass and it won't just be for transphobia. Remember when I said you have a biased opinion against me? You're showing it here. 
Arguing against the point you make isn't showing bias, especially when your comment was this flawed. I know for a fact that Pink Robot is mostly a troll. Based on what? Her history? Because now she's only trolling if she uses a specific character. It literally says on her wiki page, it's for troll commentaries. Since not everyone is entirely familiar with the newest SCC wiki, yeah. Here it is, here you go, if you want your evidence shown on the screen. Also kinda helps that Pink calls that very same character Trollbot seen within the playlist on her channel. However, Joshua, the video on you does not use that character and instead uses one called Angelbot, which, as Pink describes in her video, is the Pink Robot unit that covers disagreeable comments. Hello. So this was another series I've been mentally debating with myself to produce. This is the Angelbot Pink Robot unit used to talk about various contemptible comments found in various areas on different platforms. Guess where that left your thread on Luxter? In a situation where she was seriously covering it, without being a troll about it. And this trolling is actually harassment. Care to explain? Do you mean the fact she covered you, or a pot shots? Because you made pot shots towards us in your replies, and you cover people. So I guess you harass people too, by your logic at least. So yeah, go and harass the person who is just stating his opinion when all you have to do is acknowledge that you understand where I'm getting at, or just say nothing. Oh yes, either we are tame when we talk about how bad your points were, say nothing, or we are harassers. People can comment for multiple reasons, you know, and it wouldn't be harassment unless you can substantiate that better. Either that or I'm missing something. And yet I'm the one with the bias. Yes, you were digging for a reason to not like a video, and the reason changed when you were corrected. Give you a chance to cease this childish behavior or I'll false flag anything involving me. I wouldn't call arguing points childish, it's just debating your points. Also, most of the stuff wouldn't be taken down. I mean, besides, I could literally report that comment to YouTube and then they'd see that you had the intent to flag videos falsely. But I'm not that pay. You continued it, you're going to end it. And you started it with your comment on looks this video. Remember guys, that is coming from someone who defended pedophilia in a Twitter conversation with Naitarai. Joshua, my suggestion to you is to grow up and keep your bias to yourself. You're scaring the children here. What did any of these people here do to you? There is an old saying that holds true here. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yeah, so uh... Now I guess this needs to be addressed for just a bit of context. I'll fully admit I didn't know the story until I saw Blaze the movie fan talking about it, so I'll kind of just let him do the explaining here. Hopefully Blaze, you also don't mind. I'm going to play a clip from your video. So what is the issue? Well, George, you are defended pedophilia. You might think I'm crazy for saying this, but unfortunately it's true. Unfortunately, I have evidence of that happening, and I am going to show that evidence right now. Oh, and there is one thing I forgot to talk about earlier on in the video. I might as well talk about it now. Nintendo Switch Gamer Dude reported Night I Die for harassment. But he wasn't harassing him at all. He called him stupid. Which was completely fair because that's exactly how Nintendo Switch Gamer Dude was acting. And it's also very scummy. You can easily get fucking banned from Twitter. And for very illegitimate reasons too. So, he was abusing an easily exploitable system. That is not cool, man. Not cool at all. Link below to his video if you want the full situation. So yeah, looking at these tweets from Blaze's image, yeah, this was a thing. Which is probably something else to be addressed at some point, but isn't exactly important to talk about during the conversation about transphobia. I get the sentiment, Raven, I do. But your other comment on Pink's video is probably all that was realistically needed here. I think someone else said it in a video once, but you need to think of the internet as a digital genie in a bottle. You indirectly asked for attention, and you got it, just not positive attention. I am witnessing a real Ace Attorney breakdown, holy shit. Umbras, holy Dorito, it's a Ace Attorney breakdown. Don't bother trying to speak logic to him. You can get a better argument with a brick wall. Josh, it's good to know that you're still around purely out of spite. I'm sorry that you've been the punching bag slash joke to everyone since 2011, but dude, threatening people because you can't admit that you just decided to be completely douchey and transphobic over something as minor as not liking someone? Again, sorry you went through all the things you went through, but 
God damn, this is scummy. Why doesn't she try to avoid the drama that you started? Good question, gamer. IDFK. Maybe because you acted transphobic in an attempt to avoid sounding debunked in an argument you had already lost and changing it for no reason enough for you to completely forget what you were arguing in the first place. Look, I know that you have a hatred for Luxter for reasons I'm not currently aware of, but don't drag me down with you because I'm a girl. Your beef with Luxter is none of my business, so leave me out of this. I don't want anything to do with someone who calls me a troll when I did something to avoid voice dysphoria. TLDR, be a half-decent person and just don't get me involved with your preschool-level bickering. Cheers! By the way, just to clarify, the character that I use as my avatar is not me. It's my OC called Adriana. While this is the case, I still am female, and just because I share that with my OC that isn't me doesn't invalidate me. Get with the program, mate. Flag it for what? Disagreeing with you and calling you out on your bullshit? How entitled and arrogant could you be to think you can breeze through your life without having people disagree with you? At the moment, you're a laughing stock of the SCC. Maybe better invest your time to change that. So in other words, you'll never be forgiven. Cause I already admit that I screwed up big time with calling you a troll and being transphobic. Okay. Imagine a scenario where they critique you and people who support the person started harassing the victim. He apologizes and he still gets chastised about it. Imagine it's you. You would feel hurt that no one forgives you for your sins. I'm not going to act like what I did was right, but I'm trying to say is that I'm sorry. Forgiveness is the path to healing. If you can't forgive me, you will be forever hurt about the past. And those I dragged with. Not to mention I won't move on with my hobby. All you have to say is I forgive you. And we will all heal. Joshua, you are not the victim here. You came out to yell at Luxter, starting the situation. You came out to fire back at Pink with your- You were not involved, so no you comment. And even now you're stirring shit with Lindata, which we'll get to later. Lindata isn't obligated to accept your apology. Especially not if you're gonna be this belligerent about it. At that point, the apology comes off as hollow and no one should take it seriously. In fact, weren't you in Luxter's comment section spouting the very rhetoric of actions speak louder than words? If you honestly believe this, then why not let the actions here speak louder than your apology? Coming into comment sections vindictively trying to shout people down and threatening them not to talk about a situation doesn't do any good for your apology because the actions here are contrary to your apology. Like, trust me, I get not wanting people to talk about something regardless of if you're legitimately sorry for your actions or not. Literally, one of my most recent commentaries was me talking about the situation regarding Just a Robot and I, and I was legitimately sorry for my actions to Jar. However, despite how much I fire back at people wanting to talk about the drama from five years ago, and how much I wish they wouldn't keep bringing it up so I could move on with my life, I'm not gonna threaten someone with a false flag if I don't get my way. That just spotlights other points of problematic behavior. Okay, I wasn't aware of you being sorry, that's fair, but if I'm going to forgive you or not is my choice, and I still doubt I will for a while yet. At Lindata at least you'll try. And that's all that matters. As I always believed without a try, there isn't a do. You shouldn't have to be forced to apologize to anyone, especially if said apology is so sincere. The fact that Josh was attending a guild tribute to forgiveness is both scummy and not the sign of someone repentant of their actions. No one should have to go through that sort of harassment. Forgiveness is the path to healing. No. Healing is the path to healing. Forgiveness doesn't need to be given to those who've wronged a person for them to heal. Abuse victims, for example, should never be forced to forgive their abuser to heal and move on from it. You weren't thinking I was actually gonna forgive him for a shit, did you? Don't you dare try and manipulate her. The most you can say is sorry. It's the victim's, in this case Lendata's, choice whether to forgive you or not. Healing is the path to healing. Not at all. I am simply offering words of encouragement. I know. Very well, I might add. At Kurom Cien Tower, yeah. I'm going to say you are a jackass if you make such statements like that. A nostalgia critic fanboy as it were. For someone who recapitulates the words no this is this and this is not that. Also, Avatar has a list of reasons of why what I say is true. 
I actually have a point that addresses an even bigger problem here coming up from the base commentary. However, I want to cut in while editing to say that I really hate Joshua's attempts at analogies and connections. Be it his shit food analogies to try to get a stupidly subjective point across as more objective than it is, or here where he tries attaching an individual who's literally just correcting his misinformation as a fan of someone else's unrelated work. He does both of these all throughout the situation and about everywhere he can get away with it, and I kinda hate that, like a lot, mostly because both instances feel very condescending, to put it nicely, and the latter only really serves as a way for Joshua to brush off any counterpoints to his without doing any of the work needed. It's the easy route to commentaries, as it were, and it doesn't really look good on his end. Also, you're treating this like I have no remorse for my crimes. If anything, it sounds like you're holding a grudge. Yeah, and I'm an asshole despite apologizing. Also, just to make things clear, I am sorry for what I said about her. But like I said before, the more you argue, the more off topic you are, the more resentment I give because of your gigantic ego that's bigger than mine. I literally just caught this while editing, but Joshua, don't act slick. I know you're taking this from Pink's video. So Nintendo Meta Runner, I'm not aware exactly what your grudge against Luxter is, but it's obvious there were signs of bias and malign ants shown within this thread. You started the conversation trying to say Luxter's video shouldn't have covered a troll, but then persist to move the goal post when corrected while simultaneously sticking to your incorrect presumptions so you didn't have to concede with the idea that you may have made wrong presumptions regarding what you were talking about. But worse yet, the more you doubled down, the more incoherent the argument became, and the worse your position became, especially when you started misgendering Lindata because you didn't want to call someone who was abundantly attempting to present female by correct pronouns. Which, I guess does render a statement I say a little later a little no, not really enough to invalidate it in whole, mind you, because while you, you have shown here that you did watch Pink's video, I can make a very real argument that you barely paid attention to much as you heard the text-to-speech and thought TROLL the entire time as she was making very real points against you. The thing was, this was in direct reference to how you argued within Luxter's video comment section where you started with Lin Dada being a troll, Luxter's video being easy, and Luxter's incorrect lack of citations, and ended arguing that Lin Dada wasn't trans because, and I quote, she's not her character. This is getting off topic. Meanwhile, the argument here, while won't stay on topic because of your Avatar The Last Airbender comparison that's going to completely derail a bit, the conversation up to this point persists to be about you demanding Lindata forgive you for arguing that her identity is invalid. So repurposing Pink's point here doesn't work. Also, also, I find it really funny that you stole a point from someone you perceived as a troll. God damn, that's funny. BTW, check out my recent video. Bro, Karome's point is that no one should need to forgive another in order to heal. Using someone who has gone through actual abuse as an example. And you're calling him an asshole for that. Are you trying to say someone who is an abuse victim should absolutely forgive their abuser regardless of the circumstance if they apologize? Using a similar line of logic, and I'm sorry to get so extreme, but should someone who is a victim of rape forgive their rapist if they apologize? Like, doesn't that put more of a prominence on the victim's actions? God, and this gets even more disgustingly frustrating when you remember that Joshua is playing the victim here. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, Joshua. Also, I'll get back to that video of yours. Just you wait. At Fractured Light I wasn't manipulating her. If I did, I would not give her the choice. She has the choice, she can choose it. If she wants me to do something to make it up to her, I'll be willing to listen. BTW, how is the commenting go with you? You're really making me regret my actions. Sarcasm. Literally, that is not what manipulation is. Manipulation isn't forcing someone to do anything. It's trying to influence their choices. And in your case, coming in and trying to guilt trip Lindata with your Imagine if it was you. Imagine being in my shoes. Can I never be forgiven? Our textbook definition manipulative by nature. 
You're trying to appeal to a sense of empathy to try to get your way of avoiding the responsibility and putting Lindata into a situation where she must forgive you or look like the jackass. Which is another obvious contradiction, because if Lindata doesn't have to forgive you and you'd be a-okay with her not doing so, why are you then trying to guilt her into doing just that? Why make a big fuss at all when she doesn't forgive you with your forgiveness is the path to healing mantra? This literally makes no sense to anyone who can read. Not sure what nostalgia critic has to do with this. I haven't enjoyed Doug's content in years, and frankly, I was expecting more of a Lily Orchard comparison, if anything. Avatar goes into the topic presenting that forgiveness is the path of healing idea and challenges it. Katara literally states she didn't and probably never will forgive her mother's killer. She heals and moves on without ever forgiving him. But, sure, keep trying to give examples that contradict your own argument, genius. Once again, you may have said you're sorry, but you're not entitled for those you've wronged to automatically forgive you. End of story. Okay, transphobe. At Kurong CN Tower clapping hands congratulations, you have missed the definition of forgiveness. Forgiveness is the intentional and voluntary process by which one who may initially feel victimized, undergoes a change in feelings and attitude regarding a given offense, and overcomes negative emotions such as resentment and vengeance. If she didn't forgive him, then why did she overcome her resentment and vengeance? This... This actually does nothing to the idea that you don't need to forgive someone to do that. You know, shock to no one. Like yeah, this character from Avatar overcame those feelings. Fine, whatever. Everyone else is arguing that claim to begin with, but I don't know Avatar that well, so I'll play into it for the sake of this argument. So she overcame those feelings. It doesn't inherently mean she forgave the person for whatever this mysterious individual even did to her. It could just mean that she was willing to subside those feelings of resentment and vengeance for a greater goal or because she got tired of those feelings, or some other psychological reason that would require me watching the show to find out. Your description of forgiveness just says the act of forgiving involves subsiding those feelings, not that subsiding those feelings becomes the act of forgiving itself. If just purely going off this description, which I'll come back to later, the feelings and attitude of the individual about a situation would still be up for debate. And unless there's proof that this character feels different about their victimization, to which, given the later comments in this chain, probably not, then you can't sit here and pin forgiveness on a character that doesn't feel it. She had every opportunity to undercome it, but doesn't. But answer me, would you ask for forgiveness if you felt like you made a mistake, labeler? Yeah. I'm calling you a labeler because you have no idea what you're talking about. What I did was transphobic, but I'm don't transphobia. If I had transphobia, I would always be transphobic. That is not how that works. An individual who is transphobic can learn to not be such and can overcome those feelings of transphobia. The way this point is worded here kind of ignores the core ideals that a person can change over time. Much like molesters have fetishes, those who have fetishes are not molesters. Also, transphobe is not an actual word. Call them transphobic. At least you'll be completely honest and correct. This just in, Joshua has never heard of slang. More at 11. By that I mean transphobe actually totally is a recognized word in some places. Wow, I think you broke him. The fact that he had to quote the nostalgia critic about an episode of Avatar, and still got it wrong, showed that he never actually watched the show and was just grasping at straws since everyone remembers such a gut-wrenching ending that was the episode and how much balls the creators had for not going with the standard kid-friendly route. At the Honest Reviews Honest, look up a dictionary. Why does he need to look up a dictionary to tell you that you're wrong about an Avatar The Last Airbender episode? Does... does the dictionary have like a... Plot synopsis and character study? Man, dictionaries were more advanced than I remember. Once again, she did not forgive her mother's killer. She let him live after seeing how pitiful he had become and realizing that killing him would not make her feel better about the situation. She says herself if you paid attention to the episode, she will probably never forgive him for killing her mother, but she moves on to heal. This is not the same thing. Funny how you get on to me for meanings of words, yet you're clueless completely with them. If I did what you did, I wouldn't expect forgiveness, even if I apologized. That, 
That's why that tends to work, fam. No one's entitled to forgiveness. Aww, uh, I am a labeler. It's nice to know, Transpo. But I already know what a dictionary is. This whole thing has been a highlight to my day, fam. <laughs> it made me remember how great Avatar was, too, so that was a plus. You tried to guilt her into forgiving you. That's absolutely manipulation. At Kurom CN Taunope. Now all you're just doing is parroting what Lily said because you don't want to be proven wrong. That is rich coming from you. Can we say hypocrisy? Yeah, keep digging your grave for your idol. Don't test me, Mr. Glass of Orange Juice. I already forgiven you for your ignorance. I suggest you do the same. Oh wait, why am I listening to you? You have a toxic mindset. Why not just leave YouTube if you want forgiveness? Oh that's right, your pride consumes you. I may have pride, but I at least have a heart. This conversation is over. You are no longer worth my time. Obviously this conversation isn't over considering we still have three videos, two other threads and some DMs in a pear tree. He just doesn't want to talk to Kurome anymore. This is the worst Christmas ever. Imagine being so douchey to try and recite a popular TV show he obviously never watched to justify guilt-tripping someone into forgiving him. Are you screaming in a mirror? This is a full-blown anime villain breakdown unfolding in the YouTube comment section and it's hilarious. Not sure why agreeing with a point Lily made in one video relating to the conversation at hand makes her my idol. Also not sure why I would want to leave YouTube for forgiveness when I'm not wanting any, nor do I need any at all, other than making you look like more of an idiot. I haven't really done anything, so... <laughs> At Fractured Light, yeah, um, aren't you trying to manipulate me to just rage quitting? We already covered you don't know what manipulation is. Being annoying isn't manipulation. Psychological manipulation is a type of social influence that aims to change the behavior or perception of others through indirect, deceptive, or underhanded tactics. By advancing the interests of the manipulator, often at another's expense, such methods could be considered exploitative and devious. So telling her to forgive is a devious tactic despite the fact that the definition of forgiveness says that's not the case. Wait for it. If you're calling devious because I made a quote, that wasn't intentional. And yes, I know there's more to forgiveness than that, but I'm willing to make it up to her so she doesn't feel resentment. If you aren't, then I might as well ask what I can do. Let her decide what my punishment is, because you aren't helping her heal. It's the Ariana incident all over again. If you aren't willing to help her heal, then she shouldn't be listening to you because you have no idea what you're talking about. It's not the asking for forgiveness part that's manipulative. It's how you are going about it. Demanding and utilizing tactics based upon emotions and trying to bait empathy into getting what you want. Merely asking for it wouldn't be a problem, especially if you practice what you preached and actually allowed Lindata to potentially not accept the apology. At the honest reviews like you, Josh, now is not the time to be throwing around no use where it isn't applicable. Uh, there's a difference. Arguing with you and criticizing your actions is upfront and direct. It's not underhanded and thus does not fall under your description. You're lying by omission too. You would feel hurt that no one forgives you for your sins. Forgiveness is a path to healing. All you need to do is say I forgive you and we will all heal. Those are pretty fucking underhanded. Trying to make it about you when it's not. Implying you have to forgive someone to get over an event. And then trying to make Linda come across as selfish by implying all of us wouldn't heal until she forgave you. Shut the fuck up, you absolutely manipulated her. At the honest reviews, yeah. Way to prove your assholeness by resenting me. Ah yes, I see. So the mythical assholeness main is indeed Fractured Light. Let us all bow to his great power and hand him the smash trophy of awesomeness. Fucking goddamn, this is a dumb bit. <laughs> you must be hurting inside. You are such a good friend. In all seriousness, look up the definition of forgiving and look back at me with a straight face and say I told you so. I told you so. No, I've watched Avatar and don't need to rely on Nostalgia Critic to know what happens in the show. Plus, I haven't guilt-tripped anyone all day. Try again, Fleb. 
At fractured light it's in your mind I'm manipulating her. And dude, I looked this up in a dictionary. Are you saying the dictionary is manipulating her? Cause a dictionary's job is to define what words mean. Don't take lessons from Lily Orchard. Also, drop the bias you have towards me, you're more of an asshole than me. Anyone want to point out how Joshua has devolved into effectively trying to gaslight fractured light into believing that it's all in their head? Is that just me? Maybe? Alright. Also, your dictionary point makes little sense because your point about forgiveness being the path to healing comes from Wikipedia. And the term of forgiveness has nothing to do with whether or not someone should give it if they want to heal. This is wholly an unrelated argument for what ultimately amounts to trying to skirt all accountability, again. Well, so no, my goal isn't to get you to rage quit. Sure, it might be bad for me, but it's not better for you others in the long run. I just want you to improve, you've regressed quite badly. At the honest reviews and yet you don't read my comments again to see you're wrong. Circular reasoning doesn't validate your points. Shut up and give a proper rebuttal already. Oh my fucking god, I never said the definition was wrong. Also, may I ask, how am I more of an asshole than you when you are actively threatening to false flag stuff, manipulated someone after being transphobic towards them into forgiving you, and in general has been incredibly toxic regarding anyone with a differing opinion to you? At Fractured Light then stop critiquing. It's not going to help if you're redundant on the critique. Especially since you don't have full knowledge of forgives and manipulation from the dictionary. For the most part. Josh, I have literally pointed out how both of your understandings to both words have fucking sucked. Don't test me. I flat out fucking explained how your message was manipulative and you didn't even respond to it. At Fractured Light stop critiquing and listen to me just once. I was trying to at least learn from my mistakes. And there you go doing the same mistakes I was doing. Just stop. It's not going to help if you're redundant with the critique. You didn't listen to it the first time. The critique is still absolutely valid. This idea that being even remotely repetitious is a bad thing becomes stupid when you realize that people can continue making the same mistakes that someone else can continue to critique. For instance, if I kept my audio unbalanced for several videos and someone critiques me, if I persist to keep my audio unbalanced, that would be something the individual would continue having issues with, if not more people would take issue with, knowing this wasn't fixed the first time. In your case, Joshua, the problem comes into the fact that you tried manipulating Lindata to forgive you for being transphobic towards her. And all you have been doing is continuing to perpetuate the ideal that Lindata absolutely should forgive you if she wants to heal, even if she doesn't feel like you're deserving of the forgiveness. So it continues to persist as a problem that you are not rectifying. I was trying to learn from my mistakes. Yeah, but as you were trying to pitch earlier in Luxter's comment thread, actions speak louder than words, my dude. If you're gonna use the saying, practice it. Until we actually see you trying to learn from your mistakes, should we actually believe you're even giving an attempt? Because all we see from you at the moment is you continuing to argue and squabble that you didn't do anything that could come across as manipulative, when that's just blatantly false. You're doing the same mistake I was. No? Fractured Light up to this point has been keeping to what has actually happened, that we can see has happened, that we have knowledge of has happened. You have been trying to appeal to Lindana's emotions to try to get her to forgive you so you could walk away from a conversation that Pink Robot, and subsequently the rest of the commentary community, had taken issue with without taking accountability for it, past a backhanded apology that we will come back to. Don't think we won't. Oh, I can never resent you. I more or less pity you. You've been here for 10 years and you've actually started to evolve as a person the longer time goes on. It's like watching a human train wreck. How else can I describe someone who willfully defends pedos and threatens to take down people's videos for calling out their BS with all caps? I'm critiquing you for something you're still trying to deny. That's where the argument comes in. Forgiveness is just letting go of any feeling of resentment. She's allowed to resent you for this, you know. I think his rage broke, man. Explain how I was making the same mistakes as you, and then we can get back to the original argument. Also, again, you can improve as a person and still not be forgiven. There wouldn't be a problem with that. You literally questioned Lindata's whole identity. She's allowed to resent you for that, Marana. At Fractured Light for crying out loud. I'm not in denial. I admit I screwed up the pooch. It's you who's in denial. 
You keep saying I'm in denial, but you aren't saying how I'm in denial. And no, past comments don't count. Past comments don't count. Does that count this comment thread? Because I can point to several instances here alone where you have denied that what you were doing was manipulation. Which, in case you don't remember, has been Fractured Light's biggest issue with how you've been going about this comment thread. Like, sure, you apologized for the transphobic remarks, no one is denying that, however, some might be saying that you weren't sincere, but we'll come back to that. But because then Dada doesn't accept the apology, this is where you've been trying to come in and demand she does when she's not obligated to. Fractured comes in, saying that comes off as very manipulative, and you've been sitting here arguing that what you're doing couldn't possibly be manipulative, or otherwise trying to pin the manipulation on Fractured themselves. That's how you've been in denial, that's not even counting Lucky's comment section, or the other threads that we'll be going over to in this video. That's just counting here, in this thread alone. I want you to explain how I'm still, emphasis on still in denial. I'll tell you why you're in denial. You don't let go of your grudge against me and claim to give constructive criticism. It's not. It's redundancy. I think you need to apologize to me for your assumption. Otherwise, I have no reason to forgive you. Repetitious criticism can still be constructive. Unless you can provide evidence of Fractured Light's criticism towards you to be destructive, Stop this ironically repetitious comment. At Fractured Light just in case you want an answer. You are not listening to me. You just keep critiquing when I told you to stop. And you have this holier than thou attitude to just keep rambling. I'll listen, if you don't respond with a critique. You want me to get better, then do as I say. This antagonistic behavior is not helping your case. At Fractured Light no. She's resenting because you told her not to because apparently I'm evil. How's it feel for me make an assumption of what you're doing? Not good, isn't it? Fracture did no such thing. In fact, it was Honest Reviews, if anyone, who told Lindata that she didn't have to accept your apology, to which she responded to them with a, You weren't thinking I was actually gonna forgive them for this shit, did you? Of course, that actually implies Lindata planned to forgive you to begin with, seeing as her comment alone presented several areas where she directly attempts to counteract your behavior throughout Luxter's comment section. Why doesn't she try to avoid the drama that you started? Good question, gamer. I don't fucking know. Your beef with Luxter is none of my business, so leave me out of this. I don't want anything to do with someone who calls me a troll when I did something to avoid voice dysphoria. Flag it for what? Disagreeing with you and calling you out on your bullshit? How entitled and arrogant could you think to be you could breeze through your life without having people disagree with you? At the moment, you're a laughing stock of the SCC. Maybe better invest your time better to change that. This is not the language of someone who is willing to forgive you for your behavior regardless of how she followed up her comment basically straight up saying that if she forgives you at all, it won't be for a time being. And that's only if you deserved it, which, given these actions down the road, uh, probably not. I know I probably wouldn't had this been me. You're in denial about manipulating Lindata. You literally said it was all in my head. You haven't actually admitted that you've done it. And your second comment shows that manipulation again, trying to get me to do what you want through underhanded means. Just because I want you to improve, it doesn't mean I'm going to bend over backwards for you. That actually will make you worse and arguably more manipulative. To put it bluntly, I'm not going to do what you say, I'm doing nothing wrong, I'm trying to get you to see that you attempted to manipulate Lindata. At Fractured Light it wasn't intentional, you asshole. But the actions are still manipulative in accordance to Fractured here. Now, do I think you're doing it on purpose? Probably not, I can't tell, I could make a case for or against you doing this intentionally to try to avoid responsibility, or admitting when you fucked up, such be the case when you covered Zenny, Lucky and I those times you did so. However, Fun fact, Joshua, you can unconsciously manipulate someone, even if that's not the intent. GoodTherapy.org actually literally says that within the examples of manipulative behavior segment of their page talking about manipulation before listing a handful of examples of things that could be seen as legitimately manipulative behavior. Sometimes people may manipulate others unconsciously without being fully aware of what they're doing, while others may actively work on strengthening their manipulation tactics. Some signs of manipulation include passive-aggressive behavior, implicit threats, dishonesty, withholding information, isolating a person from loved ones, gaslighting, verbal abuse, use of sex to achieve goals, 
And as the motive behind manipulation can vary from unconscious to malicious, it's important to identify the circumstances of the manipulation that is taking place. While breaking things off may be critical in situations of abuse, a therapist may help others learn to deal with or confront manipulative behaviors from others. As a second example, even though I don't realistically need it, I do find it incredibly coincidental that the day I was editing this segment, Psych2Go had released a video on this exact topic. It's like a gift from the gods, I tells ya. Hey Psych2Goers, welcome back to another video. Have you ever wondered whether you're being manipulative? A study on non-Machiavellian manipulation suggests that in order for manipulation to occur, there needs to be a combination of intent and recklessness. Essentially, it's to strategically get someone to do or think something without addressing it directly. What is interesting is that sometimes you can be unintentionally manipulative. This means that you're not aware of how you're influencing someone else's behavior. So, to show you what unintentional manipulation may look like or how you might come across it, here are five signs that you may be unintentionally manipulative. The timing on that one is just kind of funny to me. So just because your intent isn't to manipulate, that doesn't mean that you couldn't still implicitly be doing certain actions that could come across as such. It just means that you ain't doing it on purpose. Implicit threats, dishonesty, gaslighting, and verbal abuse are amongst this list, you know, and I can, once again, point to several instances of this throughout your threats, intentional or not. Some of this from you is definitely intentional, though, and we'll get back to that. Why should I admit something that wasn't the intent? To make you feel better. Isn't that exactly the reason you've been demanding Lindata forgive you for misgendering her and then arguing that her identity isn't valid? To make yourself feel better? No, you're on the assumption I did intentionally manipulate her. Show some proof that I did. Oh, wait, you can't because it's all a trick in your mind. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation in which a person or a group covertly sows deeds of doubt into a target individual or group, making them question their own memory, perception, or judgment. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. If it's to make me feel better, it won't. An apology for assuming intentional manipulation will. If you can't do that, then I can't move on. It was clearly the intent. You told her that no one would heal until she forgave you. You put her in a spot where she'd feel like shit if she did anything other than what you wanted. Which you are also trying to do to me right now. By saying, unless I apologize, you won't feel better. You're once again attempting to manipulate someone, which shows me you don't care what you did. At Fractured Light, no, you're manipulating me to give in. You can say all you want you're not, but the minute you don't stop what you're doing, you become trapped in a non-stop argument. Think of me as a troll. So is this a confession of being a troll? Because if so, I call bullshit. You wouldn't get so mad if you were. If you keep feeding them, you're going to have a hard time. I wouldn't be surprised that you do that sort of thing. At Fractured Light and you're manipulating me to give in. Your point? You're manipulating me. No, you're manipulating me. Gentlemen, gentlemen, you're both running in circles. If anything, I was the one who assured her she didn't have to forgive him after he both antagonized and guilt-tripped her into doing it. How am I manipulating you? I literally haven't told you to do something. I've told you my goal, but nothing else. I'm continuing to argue simply because I disagree with you. And by the way, your comment also tried by underhanded means to get me to stop talking. You'll have to elaborate further. At Fractured Light, I'm autistic. So how am I intentionally manipulating her? Autistic people are socially awkward. Also, it's words, and you clearly don't know what my actions are. And the same can be said about you if you pull the same stunt. Oh jeez! Fuck! How ableist am I gonna come across this interjection? Okay, so, I'm not an expert, I get that's one of your favorite methods of discrediting an argument, but... While I know autism is a spectrum, so therefore not every person on the spectrum has the same experiences, and not exactly being able to properly read nuances and how people are thinking or feeling is supposed to be, like, a, a common thing, if I'm not mistaken? But I don't think that makes for a very valid excuse of your behavior here, like, I'm not really sure what it has to do with the situation as a current anyway, like, if you're using it to avoid the manipulative behavior claim, see my previous point about how you can unconsciously manipulate someone, plus you could still be socially awkward and vindictively manipulative if you wanted to be. 
At worst, you might just be bad at it, maybe, but you could still be it. Autism isn't a cure for malice. So it doesn't even properly debunk Fractured Light's presumption of you being purposely manipulative. Again, as I said, I'm no expert, especially not in something as broad as autism, so while it may be a reason, I don't know, it's definitely not an excuse to be such, and if you're not, basically using your autism as a shield against the claims of manipulation, I fail to see what this does to Fractured Light's point at all, as it completely is unrelated to the situation at hand. Socially awkward doesn't mean a manipulative prick. Yo, anyone want to inform Fractured Light here that they effectively went and agreed with Joshua here? At the honest review, so you're the manipulator. You are an asshole. Manipulating her into thinking that I was antagonizing her and guilt tripping her. It was you, Honest Reviews! You were the one who stole the cookies from the cookie jar! Alright, jokes aside, again, no. Lindata already wasn't willing to accept your apology. Honest Reviews didn't come in until after she basically said that she didn't. Look back at the thread. Verbatim, Lindata tells you, Okay, I wasn't aware of you being sorry, that's fair. But if I'm going to forgive you is my choice, but I doubt I will for a while yet. This comment literally says that she doesn't forgive you, and if she doubts she will in the near future. It's only after this comment that Honest Reviews even shows up at all in the thread for the first time to give some encouraging words telling Lindata that she shouldn't feel pressured into forgiving you, to which Lindata continued by saying she wasn't going to forgive you. This feels like a broken record which I know you're gonna have a problem with, but fuck it. I think I really need to cement this point here. No one manipulated Lindata to feel the way that she did. She started this line of conversation by saying that she hasn't forgiven you, and everyone else came in after the fact to validate that choice to not forgive you. This is literally seen within the thread, so this whole conspiracy that everyone manipulated her to not forgive you is honest to god pathetic. Her mindset was to not forgive you until further notice, and you are not giving her that further notice, by the way. That wasn't the intent. If it's because of the caps lock, I was sorry to her when I uploaded the apology video. I snapped because she hasn't seen the video. And before you point out what was in the video, I was trying to tell them to be civil about it. Oh, don't worry, Joshua. I've seen the apology video. We'll come back to that apology video later, though. Do you know what could have avoided this, reading all of my comments? I have this situation would not have been avoided. I get that I was being aggressive, but don't just assume I was trying to antagonize her without any proof. Look, I know that what I was doing looked antagonistic, but you have no proof that I was being antagonistic, so back off, pal. Josh, please. And if she told you this, then that's the thing. Not all aggressive behavior is antagonistic. I will apologize for it, but next time, don't let your pitiless blind you. Feel free to correct my grammar. At Fractured Light exactly. You just admit that I wasn't manipulating her. So what are you trying to prove? Oh, Josh was willing to point out that poor wording on Fractured side. Well, good for Josh then, broken clocks and all that jazz. Not all aggressive behavior is antagonistic? Dude, aggressive and antagonistic are literally synonyms of each other and I never manipulated anyone. I simply offered Lindata in words of encouragement in her decision to not cow down to your blatant attempt of harassing forgiveness out of her, because I know how petty you can get when people don't blindly do what you say. I never told her to do anything. The choice was still hers to make. So I did nothing to stoke her resentment and how you treated her. Try again, pleb. No, I'm saying that the manipulation wasn't due to autism. Nice straw man. All you said was that socially awkward doesn't mean a manipulative prick. It's not Joshua's fault that there's a miscommunication here. Your own poor wording literally would imply that Joshua can't be manipulative because he's socially awkward. Which is what he's been saying this entire time. At the honest reviews you must have felt mad when I called her a manipulator, didn't you? You mad, bro. Hey, so... Josh, remember when you asked for proof of antagonistic behavior? Yeah, that. But even if you didn't, that's exactly how I feel. Also, no, it's assertive, self-assert, and militant. Nowhere does it say antagonistic. Look it up.
Had fractured light so you're implying I'm not manipulating her? Nice strawman you got to. Look a socially awkward person wouldn't intentionally manipulate someone. So just apologize and you won't hurt your reputation as an intellectual. Josh, I have had an autistic person blackmail me using my doc's information to get me to leave the commentary community and distance myself from the friends that I've made here. By the logic you've presented to the table, that cannot be manipulative because they're autistic, which makes them socially awkward, which means they can't be maliciously manipulative by nature using this logic. Unless you want to be defending my doc, sir, I'd advise against testing me here, especially since I know you've been on the receiving end of something like this before. I think your rage broke again. At the honest reviews, no, I was highlighting. How's that assumption taste? I will admit the asterisks could have helped, but let me do my own damn thing. As for me, I'm going to apologize for my aggressive behavior. And no one is going to believe that you're genuine here. But we'll come back to that. At Lindata I would like to apologize if I came off as antagonistic and guilt trippy. That wasn't the intent. I will admit I snapped at you. But yeah, I'll do anything to make it up to you. Uh, did you realize they aren't mutually exclusive traits? You can be both. At Fractured Light okay then, I already said I snapped at her. I wasn't being manipulative. I was showing assertion. And now I understand what you're really trying to say. It's handling. Not manipulating. I know manipulating is a synonym for handling now, but you are saying that as if I'm trying to do something negative. Josh, I'm taking away your dictionary until you learn how to properly use it. For handling to be used as a synonym for manipulate, this would have to be in the context of you driving a car. This makes no sense, and you deliberately pristing words in your favor to make them mean what you want them to mean is getting on my last nerve. People are talking about you attempting to manipulate someone psychologically, which is a negative thing. I may come off as aggressive, in which in this case, I apologize if it came off that way. But the thing is that I don't think you actually know my intent. I will admit I handled it the wrong way, but that's not manipulation, that's being socially awkward. However, I will apologize for the confusion. And my mishandle mentioned. But the thing is I think you should have looked at it from my perspective and not from yours. Josh, your perspective was earlier that you didn't say anything transphobic during Luxter's threat. I think we're past the point of you demanding we empathetically look at things from your point of view. The next time someone says they aren't doing it, don't think you can help them. That is not how that works. Also wait, didn't you try pinning the manipulation on Fractured and Honest earlier after they said they weren't doing anything manipulative? Though granted, I think you might have. Either way, I apologize. Now I want you to apologize for escalating this. Otherwise, I'll resent. Grinning squinting face. Joshua, minus everything else I've covered up to this point, coercion is also a tactic that can be used to manipulate someone into doing something you want them to. You're effectively putting an apology on the table that you're willing to take away if the other side doesn't coincide with what you want them to do, which Never mind the fact that basically straight up says in all but words that you don't actually mean your apology and instead want this whole situation to blow over so no one would have any reason to think that you're actually sorry for your aggressive, manipulative, or even your transphobic behavior by this point. But doing this is putting Fractured Light into a situation where if they want you to learn from your mistakes and not continually repeat the behavior you're demonstrating here, that it's on them to drop the subject and not hold you accountable. No. That's not how that works. If you're truly sorry for your actions and legit want people to forgive you for your actions and not see you as this belligerent asshat, don't put a stipulation on your apology that you only mean it if the other side agrees to stop holding you accountable for actions you're still doing. Because that doesn't show a sign of a genuine apology that shows a sign of you wanting people to shut up about something that you were in the wrong for doing. I'm not apologizing. I mean, I hope that last one was a joke, but you're about to do it again? Is this one a joke or not? At Fractured Light, kind of. But at least forgive me for this confusion. It's tempting to look at it from your perspective and all, but that perspective is quite transphobic. For real though, using autism to hide your fuck-ups? 
I guess by that logic, you can't ever get mad at me for saying what I say to you, since I'm also autistic. Then again, can't say my autism ever compelled me to act transphobic and then double down and demand everyone getting on to me about it to apologize to me and demand to be right about every argument that I've been clearly proven wrong with. It's quite odd, that. At Kurom Cien Tao, okay, how many times are you going to do this? Because this is getting old. I already apologized, so what are you trying to prove? I'll tell you, nothing. Oh, but I thought Kurome wasn't worth your time. Also, while you apologized for your aggressive and manipulative behavior, and I still call bullshit on that by the way, I've already explained why, you didn't apologize for the use of autism as a shield, nor your constant doubling down on points to get everyone to concede with your point of view, or demanding an apology that you don't deserve along with it. I don't have to prove anything in regards to you being a whiny, demanding idiot. You do an amazing job doing so yourself, fam. At Kurom Cien Tao whiny, yeah, insert MLP whining scene here. Demanding, okay, but aren't you sometimes? I know I have been doing it a lot, but why not say that to every person that has done it sometimes? Idiot, because idiots learn from their mistakes. Not all of them. If you're saying I should stop commenting, why not take your own advice? Because you are guilty of it as well. Hypocrisy doesn't make him wrong, shut up. Oh, and for the person out there who will inevitably get on my case for this point, the continual jumps to hypocrisy from Joshua becomes a point of contention when that's his predominant point. He refuses to stop doing the behaviors that he exudes here because other people are doing it as well. And when that happens, someone's gotta call that shit out, otherwise the person who's calling hypocrisy will not improve themselves. That's the whole basis of that argument. You can't invalidate someone's claim just on the basis of them being hypocritical. That's not how this works. Just to blow that one out of the water really quick for that one person out there in the audience. I will admit I do it often, but if you want me to stop, don't be an asshole and I won't treat you like one. I hate the mentality of you act like an idiot, you get treated like an idiot. Because they assume that they are always idiots even though they made up for their idiocy. How have you made up for your misdoings? By giving a backhanded I'm sorry while holding the very same half-assed apology over the heads of everyone holding you accountable for your actions with the promise of taking away that apology if they don't cave into your demands? Give me a break. Do unto others as others do unto you. Ah, so you act like a prick and get treated like one. That was exactly what Kurome was doing to you. I know I might be hypocritical, but it should not excuse you to do so. BTW, if I don't want to admit I'm wrong, then why would I admit I was wrong about what I did? I've been showing that throughout my comment section. Literally all you conceded to was being transphobic. Everything else you've doubled down on or contradicted within threat later anyway, and even then the transphobia apology doesn't mean anything anymore, but we'll get to that. Not only that, it's hypocritical since what I looked up are facts. Specifically, the dictionary. So you're saying the dictionary's wrong? No, we're saying you're using it wrong. Like, argumentum ad dictionarium was a fucking joke fallacy, but you are the living proof of its existence. Cause that's what you're implying. You can argue all you want that I'm an idiot. But here's the thing, if we find flaws, we have every right to point it out. You can keep pointing fingers. But I'll do the same thing if I have a problem. And if I'm wrong, I will admit it. Then fess up, oh my god. Which I have done in the past. I may not say it, but I don't have to since my other words say so. I was wrong that Dan Harmon was the creator of Doc and Marty and was the voice actor of Rick and Morty, but it's easy to confuse that since vodka can make you sound like Rick. So this is in reference to, I guess, his video on Mr. Enter? A little background on Rick and Morty. This is a show that focuses on Rick, a mad scientist and his grandson named Morty. Created by Dan Harmon who came up with the idea after making a Back to the Future parody show, it was considered one of the simplest yet greatest shows on George Trump during that time of its release. But like, okay, you were also wrong here. Sure, good, you confess up to that. What does that exactly prove here when you've been valiantly defending the idea that you weren't intentionally doing something when you blatantly were still doing something people took issue with? 
even if you weren't doing it on purpose, which can still be argued when a lot of your wording choices do kind of imply there's a conscious effort to do and say what you do, but I digress, then why don't you just apologize for making a mistake? Why not just say I'm sorry and continue on with your life? Why do you have to make everything so fucking complicated? I'll tell you what, if you can show some evidence of things I got wrong, then I will admit it. We are an hour and 39 minutes into this video. There's a time and place to do it, and now it's a good time. Just don't be an asshole about it. Yeah, you can be right, but wrong at the top of your voice. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. I'm not asking you to sugarcoat it. Just to put enough sugar to help me get it down. Ugh, next thread. I wouldn't have too much problems if you just put a disclaimer not to harass the person. I may have made a mistake, but that's not an excuse to be lazy. It's almost like my critique has a meaning. If you didn't do it to be malicious, then you proved me right about starting drama. Wait, hold up, that doesn't make any sense. If Pink wasn't being malicious with her video, then it was made with the intent to start drama? Like, hello? Am I alone on that sounding weird? I won't deny that I was being a homophobe and a bit stupid. But this is proving my point that bland commentaries and doing it the easy way. It is lazy. I don't care what I'm saying for the most part. Don't bother pointing it out. This sure is a starting comment, and there's quite a bit to cover. For starters, gee Joshua, for someone who wants to get on everyone's case for assuming intent, you sure have been ready to jump on Pink Robot's case for laziness because you didn't put a disclaimer at the beginning of her video. Something that, by the way, you don't do during your commentaries. So, are we about to come in with absolute hypocrisy within the first two sentences of this thread? Or do you want to chillax? There could be a multitude of reasons as to why Pink doesn't place a disclaimer in her videos. But also, she doesn't need to in order to make a video that's well-researched, well-edited, or well-worded. This is just absolutely petty at best and a piss poor excuse for a reason to come back with a second comment on the same video to yell at the same person. Joshua, stop. Furthermore, you also imply Pink's video had no meaning behind it and only did this to start drama. When first of all, no you, she was covering your transphobic comments on Luxter's video about Lindata's commentary on some dude talking about a Hasbit Hotel song. This was your drama that you decided to start. Let's not go and pin the blame on Pink Robot for calling a transphobe how she sees it. Also, again, the fuck you mean bland commentaries are doing this the easy way? This literally makes no sense. What determines an easy or hard commentary for you? What determines a video that comes off as lazy and one that comes off as well put together with a lot of effort behind it? Fuck, I hate this criticism of yours, it's so pointlessly vague and possibly stupidly subjective just on the basis that the terms easy and hard are on their own different person to person. Ugh. And finally, I don't care what I'm saying, so don't point it out. Ah, good, so you don't want to get better. Good to know. Just some corrections. Someone trying to point out how you would be incorrect isn't like someone who would just overreact to a certain character artwork on Twitter that's called saying the record straight. Something you still need to work on. I'm sure someone would love to see you try to false flag someone's channel just because they called you out. Another thing, homophobia is fear, disgust, and resentment to gay people. And transphobia is just resentment towards trans people. And like Pink Robot said, you claiming that Ridana isn't trans was just bullcrap. Not only because you did not have evidence to sustain it, you were also hesitatiously invalidating the feelings of a trans person, and in turn, invalidating the feelings of other trans people. I think you might need a timeout on this one, kid. P.S. A suggestion that I have is, be careful with who you call lazy. At BaconLoverl01 slash David none of these things with the exception of the PS have anything to do what I say. Also, it's not laziness. It's stress. I am not in the mood for smart ass. Take your own advice. Also, go to the link. Bacon Lover was first correcting your claim that you were being homophobic by telling you that what you were being was really transphobic corrected your trying to start drama claim by telling you that what Pink was doing was more setting the record straight by calling you out on your gross behavior, and then said to be careful who you call lazy. 
All this stuff is addressing your comment just fine. Some things. One, be lazy and stress are different things. Be lazy is essentially just not being productive. In terms of what creative project you're working on, you sit in the house all day and not doing anything. Except for you might be just being in the mood for sleeping in your bedroom or just being lazy in general. That can also be depression. 2. Stress is a feeling of emotional or physical tension. It can come from any event or thoughts that makes you feel frustrated, angry, or even nervous. It's essentially a biased reaction to a challenge or a demand. And considering how you're trying to counter everyone, including someone who is probably still going through a gender transition right now, and doing so in an argument where you need your heart shown, I say you're probably stressing yourself out and trying to be like, Ha! I'm right and you're wrong! by presenting pretty flimsy arguments. Also, I do hope you had some good ammo to counter something about you defending pedophilia, at least according to what Raven and Night I have said. And yes, I have seen their comments. Please come back when you're in a stress-free situation and are able to do a good job countering someone. Also, thanks for the smart-ass compliment, and I'm not even part of this type of community, lol. What wink? At BaconLover101 slash David again, go to the link I have in the comment section. The stress is coming from people not doing enough research on the issue. Even when it's staring them in the face. I wonder if Josh is going to think the same of this video when it comes out. After all, we're almost two hours into this video and I haven't even gotten into his follow-up videos. Or his later teased commentary that as of recording this post interjection on April 5th, I'm still waiting for. Also, leave past drama out of this. If this continues, I will block you. Also, it doesn't matter what you are part of. You were acting like a smart ass. At Bacon Lover 101 slash David, it's the only link I have in this comment section. If I recall correctly, the link Joshua was talking about here is either his just to make things clear or his apology video. Both will go over later, so keep this on the backlog. Are you talking about the link in the thread that you supposedly deleted? Because I'm not sure if I'll be in the mood to try and scope for videos to try and buy and delete a comment thread. Also, if you want to claim that for playing to someone claiming that they're a social justice warrior for being against civilia and they're in pedophilia is something that you say you've done in the past, then you would have learned that civilia and pedophilia are essentially trying to have sex with animals and children without their given consent. And when someone tries to defend pedophilia or civilia by trying to push their pedosexuality or even pushing the hashtag not all pedos, it shows that they're choosing to not have the safety of animals or children as their top priority. Oh, and good luck trying to delete this thread as I'll be taking screenshots. I did too. In where exactly? At Bacon Lover 101 slash David No. In fact, I said only pedophilies. Not zoo piles. Also, no, molesters are the people who should be punished. But if you want to argue pedophiles and zoo pills, they at least need therapy and not to be exterminated. Especially since they can do something to help society. Also, for talking about the YouTube video link. Why must you be this stupid? Bacon Lover doesn't know what link you're talking about. Help. I barely even remember which of your three follow-ups you were talking about here, and I kept up with this comment section. So just screaming, THE LINK! THE LINK! really doesn't help anyone get clued into what the crap you're even talking about. Furthermore, oh my god, I guess we're actually going to be talking about those aforementioned tweets where Joshua defends pedophiles now. Fucking goody. Alright, so unfortunately I cannot find the original tweet Night Tie-Dye, also known as Foxwell, was yelling about. It appears to have been deleted, wonderful, but basically Night Tie-Dye was yelling about someone enabling either zoophiles or pedophiles? Considering the deleted tweet in question connects to someone saying that zoophilia and pedophilia aren't sexualities, which, yeah, they aren't, and that's where the tweet of Joshua's comes in where he calls hypocrisy, because Night Hide I called out someone for pedophilia after getting on a Joshua's case for effectively calling Josh Scorcher a pedophile in a commentary on him. Uh, at least I didn't spend 10 minutes raising a car. Wouldn't put it past them. It's okay, I think you're weird too. No really, you're in no position to judge since you hate hot sauce, had a pedophilic relationship with Ink Rose in the past, and played D&D. Hypocrisy? What's that? This is still one of the worst points I've ever heard in my life. What the fuck? 
Anyway, to not have this whole thing drag on ad nauseum, basically the conversation between Foxwell and Josh boiled down to, Foxwell doesn't feel as if pedophilia should be defended. Josh will thinks they should be, because not all pedophiles will act upon their urges, in a similar fashion to how Omnizoa defended pedophilia. So y'all learn in the dark, Omnizoa was someone who made what I consider to be the worst commentary I've ever seen. He defended pedophilia by connecting it to the LGBT, and basically argued kinda on a similar premise as to how Joshua here is arguing. You're specifically calling out people who say they are nomads, as in they specifically go out of their way to have no contact. As far as I'm aware, this entails not even being within a proximity, like not even being in line of sight. If there's a school playground down the street, you never leave your fucking house. <laughs> if you want to hear my albeit brief thoughts on the video, I talk about it in my worst of 2019. Link below. And that it's totally legal to fantasize about it because it's not illegal, which... I guess if that's the hill you want to die on, that's not technically incorrect? There's not really an explicit law that says they can't fantasize about it. But that's not exactly what Foxwell is arguing. Foxwell is arguing from a morality standpoint. He's saying he's against pedophilia because of what it is, whereas you're saying that people should give pedophiles a chance. While, by the way, simultaneously agreeing that we should be wary of them in case they actually try to act upon their urges, but that's neither here nor there. After this conversation, Joshua took the fucking warpath and deadass started reporting tweets of Foxwells that had nothing to do with Joshua, by the way, for harassment by his own words. Or at least, that's how it looked to me in the screenshots that Joshua used to prove he's not above false flagging anything. Looking a bit more at them, I realized that the tweets that are reported are surrounding the tweets that I had mistaken him to have reported, and we don't actually see the tweets he has reported. So actually, in fact, I have no fucking idea what these tweets are, and that brings up a lot of other questions regarding whether or not these tweets were actually worth flagging. Knowing Joshua, Probably not, but that brings up a pileup of other concerns. Also, Joshua, as someone who's looked through the threads that I could find, you actually didn't say that molestation should be punished, unless it was somewhere I couldn't see. In fact, what you did say was that consent is freely given, knowledgeable, and a conformed agreement that could be given to a pedophile to make what they do not sexual assault, and then say that pedophiles get stereotyped as molesters, followed by a hashtag, not all pedos. This, of course, ignores how, regardless of the age of consent in other areas, such as the infamous 13 in Japan law, it's usually very simplified and generalized for the sake of a non-nuanced point, because it's Twitter. Of course there's no nuance there. But generally, the age of consent laws in Japan come with huge stipulations that outright forbid indecent acts between the minor and adult, but doesn't particularly care when it's just two children. I believe it's called the Bylaws for Protecting and Nurturing Adolescents Act. And even then, the laws have been criticized for being too vague and conservative. The point is, most likely, while there are laws within the areas where the age of consent is lowered so children can legally consent, it probably comes with a huge asterisk next to it that goes, hey, this is still not inherently okay, though. Also, also, you even saying that consent is a freely given, knowledgeable, and a conformed agreement kind of implies that you expect a kid to be able to actually give consent in a manner that is knowledgeable. Because that on its own is a can of worms I'm not about to sit here and describe the problems with, because Lord knows I do not want you digging your grave deeper than it already is. Even if I wasn't and not part of the Slice Show commentary community, I would have still enjoyed the content that comes out of it and then leave a video with a simple comment. A nice job trying to call someone who's in their 20s now a smartass. David, I'm not exactly sure what your age has to do with you being called a smartass. Hell, I'm a smartass and I'm 24. If you believe that someone countering what you said and even call you out for being transphobic is somehow stressful, I kind of have to wonder if there are more things that are happening in your life that are probably more important than trying desperately to counter everyone just because you proved them wrong. If anything, there would be groups to simply help people not act on the urge to just have sex with a child. Someone who has proven themselves to be a pedophile and actively act on sexual urges, and even someone who has a sexual fixation on non-human animals shouldn't have a platform where that behavior is somehow okay. The Cosmodor situation is a pretty good example of it. And as for you only talking about molesters and not civilia, well... Night Tidai was talking about how he claimed he was a social justice warrior for being against civilia. 
Hmm. Can we claim that you're only talking about molesters now? So, in question, Bacon Lover here is referring to the replies Raven and Night Tide Eye made here. Specifically, Night Tide Eye's reply about how Joshua called him an SJW for being against pedophilia and zoophilia. Joshua, while making the claim that he was only talking about pedophiles, and you know, benefit of doubt, he could be, still probably wound up calling Foxwell an SJW for being against zoophilia too since the deleted tweet that Foxwell was responding to was connected to someone replying to pedophilia and zoophilia aren't sexualities which was what was obviously a monumentally bad take for Foxwell to blow up about. Of course this becomes he said he said because the tweet be deleted Brevna. At Bacon Lover 01 slash David I'm friends with Dude Luttons and Star Giant Productions. And transphobes wouldn't do that. If I had a nickel for every time I was used as a scapegoat for someone's transphobia, I'd have three nickels, which, no, isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened thrice. Also, my opinion. Either take it or leave it. Besides, there is redundancy on critiquing someone. If you don't want me to flip the lid every time you correct me, then just stop. Only focus on argument and don't derail. I might be guilty of this, but it's a do as I say, not as I do. Rule. Is that why you keep calling people out for hypocrisy whenever they tell you you should stop replying to threads with more aggression? Because people should do as you say instead of as you do. Don't give me that bullshit. Especially not when, as Firebolt pointed out to me, this directly contradicts your aforementioned actions speak louder than words mantra you were pitching in Luxter's comments section. Because if actions speak louder than words and you're not practicing your own spoken gospel, then your words are just words at that point. Especially when your actions contradict what you say whilst attempting to hide behind your own double standards to avoid accountability. Plus, there's redundancy in critiquing someone, so just stop. At Bacon Lover 101 slash David look, I'm not going to escalate this. You might want to try harder because you are failing at that tremendously. This isn't even taking into account that commentary you promised us. What I say is what it is. Except when it's not and then everyone's assuming things out of you. I wouldn't exactly be surprised if you kissed Natade's feet just to impress him. I don't care what you're doing. If you want to prove that I haven't changed my views, Go ahead. But who are you impressing? Night I die or yourself? Thank you and good night. If you're supposed to be friends with Doodles and Star Giant Productions, the odds are you either properly play favoritism, they are yet to hear about what you said to read data. Oh yeah, don't worry, I have. We'll get to that later. Also, wow, way to use the It's just my opinion card in your attempt to deflect negative attention. If you simply didn't want to get negative attention for making a statement defending Sylvia and just misusing our trans person preferred pronouns, then maybe don't post it online. I can assure you that other people have probably used that defense as well and ended up getting massacred on Twitter. Also, an opinion is a statement that is not factually accurate. Maybe try learning the difference between facts and opinion. Also, if you're the person to get easily stressed when someone proves you wrong, that leads me to suspect you might have anger issues or that you might have ADHD. Find you, I haven't met you or talked to you, so I admittedly don't know about any aspect of your life or upbringing. Then maybe we shouldn't have brought it up, Bacon Boy. Regardless, none of this changes his actions despite how much he'd wish that to be the case. At best, it would explain it. Still, we should focus on the actions at hand and not speculate his private life. Oh, Doodle has seen what he said and has been told about his defense of pedos. Let's just say, based on a reply she made on other of Raven's comments on this video, she's not amused. Oh, yo, trust me, not amused doesn't even begin to describe how I feel about the situation. Mostly myself. Also, oh no, were you just wishing that I kissed your feet instead of nighttime eyes? Even when you don't realize that he and I likely have never talked to each other before? At Bacon Lover 101 slash David we say stupid things that we can't always take back. But we can, however move forward when we decide. If you aren't going to move on from this, then I think you will struggle along the way. This is something I can say with confidence. But you literally just implied that you stood behind the very same core ideals that you were arguing with Foxwell. 
at bacon lover 101 slash david then why bring him up it came off as if you're kissing up to him bruh you were being a transphobe not a homophobe <laughs> at kurom cn tower not needed neither your comments and yet here we are at kurom cn tower i got myself in this situation i'm fixing it wonderful job you've done at that so far fam truly and that's the end of Joshua's second thread on Pink's video. However, we're still not done because Joshua left and came back with another thread because Pink didn't delete the previous two, something she's addressed on Twitter as of this script. Luckily, this is the shortest thread of them all. Okay, I think we can all learn that we don't keep up with comments. Especially since this doesn't want to show it unless you're refreshing. So keep in mind that YouTube's comment section only continues if you want it to continue. And I think people can agree that they usually don't refresh the comments. Or they might disable certain YouTube notifications. So in other words, YouTube should probably fix that. They do it in chats, why not in the comments? Oh no, Pink doesn't keep up with comments, this is clearly a crime YouTube should fix. Man, given how you've been belligerent about her video and continue to be so even going into this comment section, I'm not surprised she's been less frequent with checking messages. Honestly, she should be counting her blessings. Not to mention no one was showing links to any of her videos. Luxter did, and action speaks louder than words. I do not want to hear it from you. Especially not after what I mentioned earlier with your contradictory do as I say not as I do mantra. You really can't be going around pitching both these ideas at the exact same time and not be called out for it. Also, also, Pink Robot wasn't covering Lindata's video. She doesn't reference back to it in her video terribly often and any time she does, it's through Luxter's commentary, which she does link in her description. So if you're attempting to get on Pink's case for not citing her sources, then once again, I politely ask you to fuck off. Though that would require me to refresh something manually. I won't excuse my ego, but I won't excuse your handle entirely. All Pink did was call you out on something that you admitted and apologized for doing, only after she called you out on doing it, by the way, so no you. Bringing something up with speak only a voice so I can't tell whether or not you're right on the voice is the reason why I can't tell whether or not you're right or not. You see, this is why I got everyone else to voice their contributions to the situation, and opted into text-to-speech with Joshua. Because he wants to keep claiming that due to the fact Pink and Lindata and everyone else responds to him through anything other than voice, that therein means they might not even be correct on the points that they are making against him. Which, despite the fact that this makes no goddamn sense, no. Josh, the points don't change depending on how they're delivered. Not by text, not by text-to-speech, not by voice. This does not change anything. And you, presuming they might be so, not only put suspicion on your apology, since, spoiler alert, you use text-to-speech for your apology, but also because, again, you only apologized after Pink called you out. This is why using your real voice is important to understanding someone. Dude, Pink's got her reasons as to why she doesn't want to use her real voice. As kind of implied with my co-op with her, she likes to stay anonymous, likes to keep to herself for the most part, and stays a goddamn mystery in this community, and honestly, I respect that. So the point I'm alluding to is... <laughs> he doesn't even have a voice! Drew Pickles had the audacity to use Speakonia. Th this person can't even be fucked to do that. I mean... Shit, man, perhaps they don't have a microphone. Perhaps this individual wishes to stay anonymous. Perhaps, you know, they don't particularly like the sound of their voice and don't want to put it on their videos. Fuck, there could be numerous other things that makes a person want to fall into just doing something text-based. Plus, it fits her branding as Pink Robot. But with that in mind, her using text-to-speech shouldn't be an invalidation to the point she made within her video on you. Especially not when, as Kurome will go on to explain, you frequently use text-to-speech yourself. I could also be pedantic and point out how you say, that's why we use our real voices. Like, bro, need I remind you of what this stemmed off of and how one of your examples to someone you're friends with that supposedly invalidates your transphobic remarks uses a voice changer. Hi, I'm that friend. I may be guilty of this, but I at least know when to use my real voice. Check out my recent video on this.
It should cover what I have to say about critiquing. Oh, don't worry, I plan on it. He says, as he continues to use Spigonia in his latest video. Really are not one to criticize people for not using their voices in videos or preferring to argue via text, fam. You also could have just stopped leaving comments if you wanted to stop getting roasted every time you open your mouth and puked up nonsense, but you do you, I guess. At Kurom Cien Taohum, at least I use my voice when it's needed. Doesn't change the fact that you still use text-to-speech every now and then. Also, roasting. More like overcooking. As well as a hater who just got roasted eventually. Are you the hater? Because you've been the one getting ratioed since the situation started. And by nonsense, you mean facts I got from the dictionary. You mean the dictionary that I've caught you misusing? Also, most of your arguments do not stem off the dictionary. You've effectively only cited the dictionary when your argument stems entirely on semantics, which is rarely even really invalidate what anyone says in regards to your poor behavior and demanding Lindata forgive you whilst you use manipulative tactics and coercion to try to get your way. Otherwise, it's misunderstood Wikipedia articles or whining about how everyone is holding a grudge with you, critiquing you redundantly, or how you're effectively a victim in all of this whilst you blatantly ignore what everyone else has to say in regards to the shitty actions that you have said you don't even care to be responsible for because you don't care what comes out of your mouth, so don't point it out. Knowing more about myself than you. You still give no one any reason to believe you, in any stretch of the imagination. And just proving that you are just a troll. Josh, you really need to stop labeling people as trolls. Especially when your own ideals about them thus far have been that you shouldn't at all respond to feed them, and that you also can't know when someone is trolling or not unless they say something. Sure, both ideals are the ones that I've argued against and continue to do so even now. But buddy, you like throwing around the practice what you preach mentality, yet persistently refuse to do it yourself. Shown throughout these threads. And you know what? I'm not mad. I'm having fun. Joshua, denial is a river in Egypt. Something you don't know is I dealt with trolls before. And the thing is I least give you credit for at least getting a rise out of me earlier. But let's just face it, you ran out of chances to troll me. How about finding someone else if you want rising? I mean, frankly, you end up going into full anime villain like breakdowns every time I respond, so... It's safe to say, I actually do keep managing to get a rise out of you. At Kurom Cien Tower, I agree. But here, this isn't the best time if you're looking for it. I can't take you seriously anymore. In fact, I'll unblock you for the fun of it. And that's everything for the robot threads, and as you can see, Joshua has been revealing some behavioral patterns that aren't particularly good for someone who does commentaries, much less in general for a person to have. He bricks up when he's called out on negative behavior and persistently backs himself into a corner whilst trying to bite the people around him, getting more belligerent as the conversation goes on and will reach for points or an insignificant detail to try and invalidate a conversation in whole when he doesn't agree with something that's being said about him. Alternatively, we've seen Josh try bargaining his way out of a situation, putting these half-assed apologies on the table that he's willing to take away when people do not comply with his demands, and all because he had some weird, undescribed grudge against Luxter making a video. Or his grudge against Nightidae in the case of the pedophilia defenses. Or his continual need to come back to a video to get the last word and everything, as we've seen with Pink, which is a behavior that I see as a relapse into the very behavioral pattern that sparked what I consider the worst commentary chain in all of the slideshow comments commentary community's existence. I kind of briefly brought it up earlier, but for those of you on my channel who are new to this community because there's more of you every day, allow me to explain. So back in 2016, I made a review on my second channel, Doodle Tones 2, of the My Little Pony Equestria Girls movie, Rainbow Rocks. Joshua had previously taken issue with that video and made a commentary on it. Another user, Spirit Productions, and myself both covered that video separately, respectively, on our channels. Both of these videos stemmed rather lengthy chains of commentaries, with Joshua trying to get the last word in the conversation whenever a new video was made about him. This grew into what I called at the time the Joshua Tree, a technically 20 degree commentary thread devised of just everyone piling on Joshua unfairly, while Joshua fought back every response that he could possibly find in a gross display of argumentation, only halting that growth when I got back involved and argued everyone for him in a video. I'll fully admit, Looking back on it, it's terribly flawed as most of it just seems like excuses for Josh over actually debunking the poor argumentation laid out in front of me. Of course, 
that was only the initial tree that stopped growing as there was a branch I initially overlooked at the time that grew into something more and now we have this Buster Cluck, ironically, of segments that have the exact same issues stemmed off of it with other people needing to get the last word in conversations that somehow tied back into the current blob that ate everyone that we know of now. That's also not the only time I've seen a chain like this grow into something with that same problem. Guys, seriously, learn how to drop an argument. You don't need the last word and everything. This extends past Joshua. Looking at you, Halo fan, Nicholas, Dan, Umbris, Slumber, Pepper, Azriel. Anyone I'm missing? Coda, maybe? Presuming you're still out there, I guess? V, you too? Oh, and Orion Sagan fan, I guess. I still see your DeviantArt journals talking about drama from like 2013 popping up in my notifications from time to time. So you too, presuming you see this. Of course, maybe I shouldn't be hopping onto my final thoughts too quickly. After all, we still have three follow-up videos. The apology, the just to make things clear video, and a third follow-up video called How to Give Constructive Criticism Without Coming Off as a Big Asshole. Which, yes, is in fact a direct response to this situation. In any case, we're covering all three. If people have seen Luxter's recent commentary... Oh hey look, it's a troll video! I mean, after all, Joshua is using Speakonia, and as we all know up to this point, is that if text-to-speech is being used, that must mean there's a troll afoot. Like, normally I wouldn't give a shit because Pink Robot exists and she's not a troll unless she's using her Trollbot character. Like, she has a specific character designated for trolling purposes. But otherwise, she's not a troll despite what Joshua thought about she and Lindata. But knowing that he has this opinion of text-to-speech, seeing both threads, this really looks disingenuous coming from him, which is concerning when you realize this is the apology video that I've alluded to being the biggest backhanded thing about this drama. Then I don't have to summarize it. But just in case, link to two videos in the description. I want to point out that the two videos Josh here links in his description go to Luxter's video on Lindata and Pink Robot's video on Joshua, just in case you were unsure about the timeline of events between him apologizing and Pink calling him out something I've alluded to all video. This continues to beg the question of why Joshua opts into yelling at Pink after the fact based on her text-to-speech making it hard to tell if she's right or not. Whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean. Also, side note, just thought about this, but going back to what he has linked in his description, my mind drifted back to the third comment section Joshua left on Pink's video that was yelling at her for not leaving a link to Lindata's video on Degenerate. I think I'll leave that one to speak for itself. If everyone has watched them, I would like to apologize for the implied transphobia and assumptions. Wasn't really an implication when you outright argued a trans girl's identity, but go off, I guess. I will admit I was being an asshole. Granted, opinions are like assholes. But that's not here or there for discussion. Okay, so like, is this trying to say that everyone is an asshole, or were you trying to say that it's your opinion that Lindata is not trans? I'm very confused by this group of statements. The bringing up of opinions and assholes comes really out of nowhere, and when connected to your apology, doesn't really make any sense to the context at hand. However, I still stand by the opinion that Luxter's recent commentary on her was just a hot dog with ketchup. Simple, yet tasteful? Because there's nothing wrong with that, my dude. I get it, I get it, don't worry, you're trying to call his video bland and whatever, fine. No one actually cares if you think this or not because ultimately that's subjective. However, that's not what you came in in with regards to Luxter's video and that's not what people were criticizing you for. People got onto your case initially for coming in and accusing Lindata of being a troll when she wasn't, saying that simple commentaries equate to bad commentaries, which no, simplicity doesn't inherently indicate the level of quality, and if it does, you've got some stuff to answer to. Like, I still don't know what constitutes an easy commentary to you, but considering none of your commentaries are all that different from Luxter's video on Lindata in the realm of jokes, with yours having even less elaboration on points you make, and a still image as your avatar, whereas Luxter keyframes PNGs of his avatars, one can make the very real argument that, whatever your standard is, you probably fall below it. Then there was getting on the Luxter's case for not citing his sources, when he does, with the more the conversation went on, the more people realized you were making things up to get angry at Luxter for, until you ultimately dropped the fucking transphobia bomb on us because you heard Lindata's real voice. No one cares that you think Luxter's commentaries are bland, or boring. No one argued it when you elaborated, no one's gonna care now. Just don't watch his videos and move on with your life. That's what I do to several content creators I find to be rather droning to watch. 
Hi, Star Giant. How are you? That said, the fact that you think this was even a part of the conversation to begin with shows how little you actually paid attention to the situation at hand. I mean, you apologized for the transphobia. At least, I think you did. Still can't tell. But following this up to it doesn't make any sense in context. Not much entertainment value. I just realized, in context to the full statement, he says that a hot dog with ketchup has not much entertainment value. <laughs> Wording is funny, ain't it? All that I just say is do what Luxter said and agree to disagree. As well as move on from it. Luxter literally says in that comment that you were starting to cross some lines and that the chain was getting a bit long for his liking, so he agreed to disagree because he didn't want this to continue. Which... God, poor Luxter, all he wanted to do was make a commentary. And to make sure we move on from it, if anyone brings it up in my comments or replies will either get flagged or removed. So, uh, yeah, knowing that this video was posted during the pink robot comments, now you understand why this particular point about wanting to drop the subject, move on, and agree to disagree rings hollow. But then we have this threat to flag and remove any comments talking about the situation, which, I'm gonna be honest, yes, I get it, but also... Also, videos bringing up the drama for the sake of drama and not for the sake of teaching them how to behave will get flagged for harassment. It may sound like I might be biased, but keep in mind that I have a way of knowing what the video is for. This. This is really pushing it when you remember that you, Josh, thought Pink Robot was out here trying to start drama because she's a troll. So you'd all be for flagging her. I have a way of knowing what the video is for. My ass. So with that in mind, how should we expect you to ha know what comments are trying to help and which ones are just digging up drama when you can't even decipher that from your own fellow commentators' videos? Hell, are you gonna flag my video down for harassment too? This really does ring hollow and screams that you're more willing to threaten those in the silence over actually understanding what you might have done wrong, hence why I think this apology is backhanded. At best. Once again, if you were truly sorry for your actions, you wouldn't need to threaten anyone to back off from you. You might have to repeat your apology for those in the back a few thousand times in some cases, but a threat gives off a different and more aggressive approach. It also doesn't help your case when you have this video as something that you might have still gone on to reference after apologizing for coming off as such within Pink Robot's comments, specifically the reply thread between you and Bacon Lover. If this is the case, then yeah, no shit people aren't going to take your apology of being aggressive seriously, not when you're going to turn around and threaten people shortly after with a fucking flag for harassment claim. I won't act like I'm the smartest person. I'm more average than anything. No one has, up to this point, claimed that you have a superiority complex. At best, people have said that you can't admit to being wrong, and when you have to get the last word in absolutely everything, I don't blame people for maybe thinking that. At 5.15pm, I will start a stream. He then cancelled the stream a little later. No one has any idea as to what the stream would have been about, but considering what he says next, I doubt he had any plans to talk about this properly. So, this is most likely irrelevant to the apology and is just used to shell his other stuff. Blades, by the way, if you're going to talk about the drama, at least be tactful about it and don't use words like why are you transphobic? Why do you have to state your opinion as fact? What is your deal with Luxter? Exclamation point. If this is done three times, you will be removed from the chat. No exceptions. Okay, so ignoring how this stream never happened, since this is not your stream, why? Maybe not, why are you transphobic, because I for one can't say if you are or not. I definitely think you've said some head-ass transphobic shit and we'll get to that. But what is your deal with Luxter? You've been at this grudge for a year and asking him, not even he fully understands this beef that you apparently have with him. Why would you go around toting your subjectivity as if it were more objective? You like playing the opinion card when it benefits you. Literally earlier this very video, you brought up opinions, albeit arbitrarily, so what gives there? Like, you plan on having a three-strike system for your stream chats for questions that should be addressed. Things that people do not understand, all because you refuse to answer them. But that only leaves us with more questions and concerns about your behavior. Once, the chat gets removed and twice, we'll get a timeout from chat. Hopefully you mention the drama like civil people and not like a bunch of immature brats because of their hatred and contempt for the person. Signing off. Gee, that didn't come off as passive aggressive. No siree. Josh? Being passively aggressive about his threats? Pfft, pardon the thought. Anyway, that was his half-baked and kind of backhanded apology video he wanted everyone to see. 
Now let's get to the second video, the one that followed up this apology video. This is going to go deep. I already apologized to her about being a transphobic, and I'm sorry for calling her a troll. However, I will say attacking someone for having an opinion is basically harassment. Ugh, there you go playing the opinion card for your fuck up. After you apologized for being transphobic and assuming Lindata was a troll, and you wonder why no one takes these apologies seriously, come on Colby House. I will admit I could have handled it better, but getting redundant on critiquing is something that should never be done when trying to help them improve. So, you may already be seeing what this might be about, and if you think you do, you're probably correct. This was posted a mere day after his apology video and completely reverts everything he apologized for as the whole video is Josh being aggressive. Again. Threatening others into silence. Again. And literally not learning from the Joshua tree. Again. This video is also frustrating in other areas too, and mind you, it's only two minutes. Now to address the actual point Josh gives us here, uh, fuck off with that. Not only have you been repeating this very same talking point regarding redundancy, making your own criticism redundant by your own logic, but you seem to have no self-awareness as to why it is you're repeating yourself and why other people have been repeating themselves in certain conversation and commentaries. Spoiler alert, it's probably the same reason. If you don't listen the first time, it bears repeating. Not only does it make you an asshole, it makes the person resent them. Subjective. There is such a thing as too much criticism. Honestly, agree. There can be too much of fucking anything, though. Just because more than one person repeats a similar issue that you have, have shown to acknowledge you have, and choose not to fix is given by the actions you persist to do in regards to threatening people in the silence about them, doesn't mean you're getting too much criticism, though. It just means that the problem is seen by more than one person and will be voiced as a criticism by those people. This also goes with Lexter's video on Lendata at the very start of this whole spiel. One of your criticisms regarding Luxter's video was that he said the phrase the singing is flat thrice throughout his video and therefore that makes his video repetitive and bad or bland or whatever fucking back asswords point you've been trying to make. I don't know anymore. On that note, how much criticism is too much? Given that you were getting on to Luxter's case for three repetitions of points that, may I add, were different from each other in context, where is that line exactly drawn? Two? One, even? Like, honestly, I'd say if three people were critiquing the same problem from my end, I'd probably see that as much more of an issue than if it were just one or two people doing so, because it showed that either A, I didn't work myself properly and I should probably do better in the future, or B, the problem is just there and I should probably work on fixing that in any way that I can. Once is an event, twice is coincidence, three's a pattern, you know? I get it, you want me to improve but comment on something that has no relevance to the recent comment, just being too nitpicky about something, spamming the same thing over and over again, butting into conversations that don't include you, and just being a dingus about it is not what I call constructive. Alright, so, boy do we have a list to go over. Commenting on something that has no relevance to the recent comment. Would now be the best time to bring up your Miyamoto quote crusade and how you literally went to the DDCD Ask Twitter to start an argument with me through my characters, or how after this video you came to my video on Sylveon to yell about the argument you had with Fractured Light and Pink Robot's comment section, or, or, the initial comment you made on my worst commentaries of 2020 list to talk about something that would have happened after the stuff I was talking about within my initial segment involving you. Josh, you have a really bad habit of doing that yourself. Also, I know this is in reference to either Bacon Lover's reply bringing up the situation between you and Foxwell on Twitter, or directly a reference to Raven and Foxwell's comments on Pink's video themselves. And in either case, the former was hoping that you were able to explain yourselves regarding you defending pedophiles, and the latter was asking if you were the same guy, not knowing who you were. Neither were bringing up these irrelevant things to critique you for. This situation at most is just an additional thing that someone wanted you to answer for. Being too nitpicky about something. Joshua, you are the last person to say that being nitpicky isn't constructive when you sat there and argued that transphobe isn't a word, or your numerous arguments of semantics citing the dictionary to base an entire argument on. Not to mention how you critique people for using text-to-speech when that doesn't change uh, arguments being had, or repeating parts of an argument three times, or being simple, or being boring, and never mind the fact that complaining about nitpicks is in of itself a nitpick. Like, ah? Uh -huh? Spamming the same thing over and over again. This is apparently in reference to a bunch of comments typing man in response to Joshua's apology video. 
These weren't meant to be constructive, but is instead a reaction towards how you've been acting. Butting into conversations you don't belong in. Fuck off! You, in neither the transphobia situation nor the pedophile situation for that matter, were you directly involved in either conversation. You're not typically involved in situations regarding your commentaries either. Actually, generally speaking, while some people do ask for it, criticism is given to those who don't ask because those who are doing something wrong and don't realize can be informed about their mistakes and be taught how to better improve so they don't make those very same mistakes in the future. Since this is directly responding to Pink Robot because that was your direct critique with her, she saw how you were acting within Luxter's comment section, specifically in regards to your transphobia towards Lindata, and told you not to be transphobic. Was she involved? Not initially, no. But that doesn't make that point any less prominent, and the fact that you keep claiming that she wasn't being constructive because she wasn't involved makes me wonder exactly how sorry you actually are for being transphobic to begin with when you look at her telling you to not do so as deconstructive in a place to resent her. How sorry can you actually be? Especially since you apologized after her video on you, being a dingus about it. No you. You could point out hypocrisy, but am I wrong? No. Actually yes, you are, and if you want to know why, see my last interjection. Also, it's a do as I say, not as I do. Okay, now I think it's time to address this little double standard. Because as much as you want to tote around the idea of do as I say, not as I do, it really looks like you're trying to shulk the responsibility of changing your actions and trying to pin the responsibility on everyone else. That wouldn't be the case if you were using this phrase as an apology for acting hypocritical, because yes, you can do that. That's what the idiom used to be used for. However, when you continue to later use this video to say that you don't care that your actions are hypocritical, it doesn't show a sign of a genuine apology or actual advice we should give a shit to listen to, especially since you choose to do all the stuff you ask of yourself. Like, no, hypocrisy by all means on its own does not make you wrong, but it does make you a hypocrite. If you want to do a commentary on it, that's fine. But at least be tactful in the comments and do unto others as others do unto you. Another do as I say, not as I do. Oh, I get it, so others should have to follow the golden rule, but you yourself can treat anyone however you like. That's what this implies, Joshua. Anyone who does do those things in the video as well will get blocked. Well, now I know what to expect from this video. Anyone who does it in my comment section will get a strike. One will have the comment removed, two will be reported, and three will be blocked from my channel. Wouldn't it make sense to remove block and then flag because a friendly reminder that flagging tells youtube to look at something as they might have to put a strike on it it probably shouldn't be the other way around that goes to streams as well though in this case three will be banned from the chat i'm not holding back also more dislikes than likes will have them not seen and if the comments get out of control it will be removed so anyone remember when joshua presumed karome was a lily orchard fanboy I don't hold grudges. That's literally not what you said in the comment section of Luxter's video on Lindata. Even without that though, I'd still call bunk on this claim considering your actions in regards to Luxter, and even Loudon if you want to go that far because yeah, I went back to check at that thread too. I'm not gonna cover it, but you are testing me. However, if you say you came to make amends and instead you repeat the formula, then I won't consider you as a friend anymore. Have fun finding someone else to use as a scapegoat for transphobic comments then. As well as being blocked from whatever site you try to contact me. Though, I will possibly watch your videos if you have any. If it's to make amends, then I will forgive you. Clickbait me though three times, then you will be considered 100% irredeemable. That is my rule of three. Almost. So behave or else. Signing off. And that was Josh making his declaration of war. Have I mentioned how disappointed I am yet? Because the answer is very, and I'm still not done with the videos. We have this how to give critique video on the docket, because that was also made in direct response to Pink in her comment section. It's that transparent. Let's begin. I will admit I was an idiot in the past and I'm still learning. But if there's one we need to work on is sounding right at the voice. If you aren't going to do that, I won't listen to you. Is this in tone or just in general? Because by now we all know how you feel about text-to-speech, and if it's the former, well, I'll say caps lock is cruise control for pool, apparently. This is why having a voice is important. This man really stepped into this video to say having a voice is important as he uses text-to-speech.
If you don't have one, people are going to assume whatever they're going to assume. Want me to be honest with you? That'll happen regardless. This whole situation is proof of that enough. I won't deny I was the one who started it, but that's not an excuse for not trying. Who wasn't trying? Luxter? But he has a voice. Pink? If it's pink because she uses text-to-speech, I've already addressed her want for anonymity and branding purposes, so I don't know much mo more you want there, and on top of that, uh, hi, hypocrite. Lindata? She's a trans girl who didn't want to use her real voice for dysphoria reasons in the video she used the text-to-speech in, so if you're referring to her, allow me to say, okay, transphobe again. And literally everyone else was in comments. Inherently, they wouldn't be able to use their voice in their responses. By that matter, you can't use your voice in comments. Of course, that doesn't seem to matter to you, does it? I just realized a fifth possibility to who he's saying should be trying harder, which I think is probably the worst possibility out of all of them I brought up. But he could be telling everyone else to try to end the situation that he started. And if that's the case, then you have demonstrated the exact reason why no one should forgive you or believe that you're sorry to begin with, and especially why no one wanted to drop the situation when you initially asked. Because if you're deadass trying to say, regardless of if I started it, you all should end it, then I hope you slightly overcook your next s'more because you're again putting more of a requisite onto everyone else to make up for shit you still haven't properly apologized for. I was apologizing and then you had to be a dick about me not really being sorry, which caused even more outbursts from me. So wait, Lindata didn't take your apology, and that's what caused your outbursts. Is this the hill you want to die on? Because friendly reminder, you yourself straight up said that you were willing to rescind your apologies if people didn't cave in to your demands. How is that an apology? And then you say I was manipulating someone when really I didn't know what I was implying. Doesn't matter, you can still manipulate people by accident or subconsciously. If you call this constructive criticism, then I can say you are sticking up for her because everything I put is automatically bad. Not everything, just these videos in particular. Also, wow, I love how you say that without a voice people will make assumptions about you and then immediately turn around to say that these videos can't possibly be constructive in nature and will only exist for the sake of white knight England data. That's totally not assuming on your end. Nope, not at all. When in reality you are giving me criticism. I'm autistic. I don't know how to hold a conversation on my own. But I will say if you want to give me criticism, then do it in video format. Not only be right, but be right with your voice. <sighs> A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. I'm not saying completely sugar coat it, but I can take it if you just cut the snark, cut the rage, and cut the attitude. So, sugar coat it. I think you lost that luxury... 27 pages ago, when you started writing in cruise control at everyone who was critiquing you without any snark? Also again, why does it have to be with a real voice? Why can't you just accept the fact that Pink Robot, despite how her language demonstrated that she was the angriest I had ever seen her, was still ultimately constructive in her commentary on you? Yes, I'm guilty of it, but only because you did the same. Didn't you come into Luxter's comment section yelling at him for covering a troll? Like. Maybe it's because every comment you leave seems to substitute exclamation points for periods, but that typically indicates yelling. Even then, you were the first one to start writing in full caps lock, calling Fractured Light naive in a belligerent and aggressive manner, and this was after you had called Lindata not trans. In Pink's comment section, you came in again, yelling no you at her because, and I quote, you weren't in the conversation, then persisted to leave three extra comments on her video afterwards. In no way were you not the first to get aggressive. As well as got redundant. Never butt into a conversation unless you truly care for the person and don't do it to fuel the fire. I am so exhausted. I was at least trying to put out the flames. And most of all, know the time and place to criticize. I think Kurome put it best. Wonderful job you've done at that so far fam, truly. Otherwise, it'll come off as you're trying to torture the kitty. Quit pretending to be the victim here. We haven't even gotten into your DMs with Lindata yet. I know I may be guilty of all these things, but I'm at least trying to take it to heart. After seeing how you've been acting on Twitter since the situation started, forgive me for wearing out the X button on my PlayStation controller. I will at least try to be civil about it. Also, comments will be removed from this video. 
If you want to talk to me, go to my Discord channel or Twitter. If you can't do that, then you will be blocked. That is all. Like, what more is there to say on the matter? I'm tired and Joshua's video is trash. Honestly, if you want a more in-depth video on especially the latterist video I cover, I'd recommend Firebolt's video on the matter if you want a much better response to it. Heyo, Bolt here, and welcome to me wasting my time. So, here's the context. Nintendo Meta Runner, or Joshua Colby House as he's more commonly known, has been in the commentary community for around a decade. He's gotten himself into many controversies, the most recent one being in the comment section of Luxor's commentary on Lindata, but I don't really want to cover the drama. Or at least I didn't, but I'll get to that later. I do, I say, as I look over my 56-page script and weep. And we're still not done. So, I was hoping to just end the video after the three videos and call it a day, but then Lindata released a video on Joshua called Joshua Colby House Has a Problem With Me. Personally, I think it's 11 minutes of well-thought-out criticisms towards Josh, and it's easily the best video I've seen of Lindata's without question. Link to that also below if you want to watch that. On that note, Joshua left some comment threads about his thoughts, which given how long this video has been going on for, I'd love to cover in full, but we'll kind of just go over enough to get a basic idea as to what's going on. So, for those listening in the background while you draw or play games, you might need to break away for a bit so you can see the comments I was given from Lindata. So, if you please. The first comment is Joshua saying that not only he flagged the video for, and I quote, misleading your audience, but he's also getting angry at Lindata for making assumptions about his actions. While yes, by all accounts you're correct to say that we have no idea what's going on in that head of yours, we can make educated guesses based on your actions. But also, you flagged the video when it was trying to give criticism. I guess so much for that, I know what the videos are made for, bullshit. The second comment is Lindata's retort. While I was not given the full response, it seems Lindata had said something about her video being used to give criticism, while also stating that Joshua called her by he, him pronouns after using the proper pronouns before. Something that he did do. And yes, he can't deny he did. We have the screenshots in now three videos. Also, word of advice to Lindata herself, if you want to share screenshots with other people, it's best you click the read more so as you give us the full perspective of the conversation at hand. Joshua retorts by saying that the video wasn't used to give critique, but was instead built on bias and hatred. And like, fuck off? You want to get on everyone's case for not being mind readers and knowing what your intentions are. Do not start accusing Lindata of merely making a video on the back of spite when you legit haven't any actual proof of that yourself. Yes, Lindata's video is on the harsher side of what we've seen. Well, truthfully, all four videos about this situation by this point will be harshish in tone. Who am I kidding? But that doesn't exactly mean that their harsh words can't be ultimately boiled down to critique. In order, she closes out the video by telling you not to dehumanize people by calling them trolls based on sheer disagreement. For as of the time of scripting this though, that brings the current events of the situation to a close. To conclude this video, don't dehumanize people as trolls just because they disagree with you. Don't threaten people with false flags in an attempt to get your way. Don't threaten people to rain down with the tyrannical power that you have a fantasy of having just because they called you out on being a shit person to a fucking minor. And don't expect forgiveness when you haven't really earned it. And finally, don't expect people to go ahead and forgive you right away just because you refuse to change for the better if people don't sugarcoat their critique. Again, her words may have been a bit on the angrier side in calling you tyrannical, as an example, but that's ultimately what the criticisms were, because those were the reoccurring issues that stemmed throughout the threads and videos. Joshua then follows that comment up with another, telling Lindata to stop making videos for a bit to clear her mind. Yes, because it's the trans girl you purposely misgendered that has no right to even be remotely angry by the situation at hand. She wasn't even exactly all that belligerent in her tone, just used words that might have indicated a more negative response towards you and your actions. Lindata asked how she didn't show any proof when there are plenty of screenshots in that video to back up what she needed to say. Some examples include... This video had received a comment, which is no longer there, unfortunately, I wonder why, left by Josh. This comment had a rather passive-aggressive tone to it as Josh had thrown me under the bus by calling me a troll to find an excuse to rag on Lux's video for literally no reason. Me. This led to Umbrus responding to Josh's comment. Most of it isn't relevant for our purposes of today, but the first point that it, it does make is relevant. The same point was made by Rhino SCE with an additional piece of information that will be important later. Josh then later replied with a load of waffle that was mostly about Lux's video with a small mention of me at the start. 
admitting that he has no proof of me being a troll. And that's just within the first handful of minutes. If you want to claim that she didn't have evidence or screenshots, then I don't know what to tell you other than, you know, watch the video. She then follows that up with a comment saying, I do what I want, whilst calling Joshua immoral because of his transphobic remarks. And this is the first time that I'll say Lindata did go too far. I get that Josh's attitude and actions throughout the situation leave a lot, and I stress, a lot to be desired, but to straight up call him immoral is maybe dehumanizing him a little bit more than he did calling others a troll. So in that case, yeah, Lindata maybe needs to chill. Not stop making videos for a while chill, but maybe, you know, take some deep breaths kinda chill, you know? Josh then asks if she bothered to get his side of the story by reaching out. Motherfucker, do you not think for a second that we all have heard your side of things by now? With five comment threads, three videos, some Twitter posts, some unrelated YouTube posts, and some leaked DMs that we'll get to, by the way, I think we understand your side well more than enough by this point. Sure, the leaked DMs in the one of five threads weren't out by the time of Lindata's video, but that's still a hefty chunk of context to understand your side of things. Unless you've been lying to us this whole time about your reaction to everything, then at that point, why are you even remotely surprised that people take issue with your actions? Even more so. Lindata responds by telling Josh to quit changing the subject and playing the victim. The thread then went down for some undiscerned reason, to which Josh then accused Lindata of taking it down because she couldn't admit to being wrong, which is rich coming from you, to which Lindata corrected and explained that she didn't take it down, then told him to prove that what was said about him was lies, which, yeah, if anyone was actually wrong in what they have said by this point, Josh, Actually correcting them instead of trying to threaten people into silence would probably be the best option for you. Because as it stands, what you actually did is all here in this video. Finally, Joshua challenges Lindata to talk to Discord. To which Josh took to Twitter to leak their DMs, because while he quote, tried to be reasonable, Lindata called him a sexist in return. I also want to preempt this by stating that Lindata also gave me these DMs from her perspective. Her perspective is in dark mode, while Joshua is the much better for my eyes light mode. It absolutely is a personal thing. Dark mode just hurts my eyes. Y'all are just me. Hello there, Josh. You wanted me. Here I am. So, what did I say about you that was a lie? I called you female the first time because of the feminine voice and called you a male another was because I was angry. Anger is something that I struggle with for the most part. Anger can clutter your mind. All I have to say is I'm sorry for misgendering you for all the drama I put you into, and for not owning up my criticism earlier. I will admit I was trying, but I still have a long way to go. People sometimes make mistakes and sometimes it takes time to learn. BTW, your let's plays are okay. I mean, if I wanted to be petty, I'd point out how this doesn't exactly answer Lindata's question of what was said about you that was factually incorrect. Since, not only does Lindata already bring that up later, but that might be a little mean of me in particular since, benefit of doubt where it's due, you are trying to apologize here, at least for the transphobic remarks from the beginning of the situation. It does ring a smidgen hollow knowing that these were leaked to Twitter in an act to make Lindata look worse than she honestly is in this conversation, but at least there was a genuine attempt here. Here's the thing. If your anger response is to act in a transphobic manner, that isn't showing you to be that great of a person, my dude. And my criticisms of you go beyond transphobia as well. Here's a good list of them. Calling me a troll when you admitted you had no proof. Telling my friends to let it go when they were standing up for my identity to be taken seriously in a situation you had brought before them. Trying to brush off your own bigotry by drawing the attention onto Pink's flaws. Implying that me using TTS is a problem when you do that yourself and more frequently than I do it. Threatening people with channel strikes to exploit a shit system to scare them out of criticizing you. And a new one, deleting your comments to hide the mistakes to make it look like nothing happened. And it continues. Because of the escalation that overwhelmed me. Joshua's screenshot cuts some context here actually. Lindata past this point continues with her list by explaining that one of the points of criticisms is how he refused to answer the question, and instead chose to deflect from it by not telling her what was lied about him, then continues to say that being overwhelmed isn't exactly an excuse to call her manipulative. Though, if I may, Lindata, I can't recall a point where Josh called you manipulative. He was willing to pin that on fractured light and honest reviews like crazy, but I don't recall him specifically throwing that on you. Of course, 
being 52 pages in and having worked on this with no food and little sleep has possibly driven me a little on the crazier side, but I think I'm okay. No promises. Look, if all you're going to do is just recapitulate what you're saying as well as avoid the apology, then you really aren't a lady, are you? Ladies don't start fights, but they can finish them. That's... that's... <sighs> no, that's not what Lindata is doing here. She's trying to tell you that she still has issues with you despite the apology for the transphobia. This isn't trying to start another fight with you, this is elaborating on the criticism she has of you. Ooh, sexist much? Still denying my identity, huh? No, I didn't say you aren't a woman, I said you aren't a lady. There's a difference. Also, civil. I know Lindata brings this up in literally the next message, but... They're literally synonyms, Josh. Tread carefully and try again. No, there really isn't. They are synonyms. I'm sorry, you're the one who made a sexist statement, so it looks like we're both doing whatever we want here. Okay, so I do take issue with the sexism accusation here, actually. Because initially I figured it might have just been a joke at Joshua's expense, and I will fully admit that it's still a possibility. But the more that I think about it, the more that I've come to the conclusion that doing it the way that Lindata did is not exactly the best and comes off as rather problematic. I never did say she handled the situation perfectly. But my issue with this, regardless of if it's a mere rib or an actual accusation, is the timing and point of conversation between the two of them. Joshua wanted to reach out to discuss the situation with Lindata, and for Lindata to just drop this accusation in here so casually while Josh is already on the defensive, is counterintuitive to doing just that. Plus, if this is a joke, it's not exactly tasteful considering the situation at hand. And if it's not, well then we have other problems because Josh is not being sexist here. Well, hmm. Okay, actually I guess I can see where you get the idea from considering the wording of ladies don't start fights but they can finish them. But I don't know if I'd necessarily see that as sexist. Tasteless, absolutely, since he's once again trying to pin the responsibility on the Lindata to drop the situation entirely when Joshua himself hasn't given a proper apology that he hasn't later either contradicted or put a giant stipulation on. But in any case, the sexist part of his comment is at most just really poor wording. That said, don't get me wrong, Joshua saying that Lindata isn't a lady isn't exactly tactful either. Especially not when she is shown to not be happy in numerous places during the shit show by his aforementioned transphobic comments in Luxter's comment section. Calling a trans girl you already argue the validity of their identity of, not a lady, is only going to take like 30 steps back from that apology and give us an excuse to see you as just being transphobic again. It's an unfortunate cluster of circumstances that unfortunately puts neither necessarily in the right, but this is probably the messiest interaction we've seen thus far. Get out. I'm not going to listen to you if you aren't going to be civil. Says the one who blocked me without me answering your point. And the one who made a sexist remark. Who's civil now? The one who just yelled, get out, after I called you out on your bullshit? I doubt it. Look, I'm trying to say I'm sorry but something in your head just says he can't be trusted. Gee, I wonder why. When I upload this to Twitter, people are going to see me as reasonable and not you. Good luck with that, King. I'm trying to lay it to rest. So don't say something you won't regret. Will. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't hurt me. Sorry. She says this sarcastically because she literally was screen capping it all herself. Josh wouldn't know this, though, because of the temporary block. Look. My mind is mush, I've got no more to cover, and so that means I'm done with this garbage. Time to wrap everything up in a nice little bow. Yeah, um, pot calling the kettle black. All of this could easily imply to you now. BTW, if you plan to use my logic, it's on you. Not me. You can point out I'm doing the exact same thing, but that just proves you're the one manipulating me. Everything you point out won't work. If you honestly think that reverse psychology will work, think again. All you're proving to me is that you're either in denial or a harasser. You want to prove to me I'm in the wrong, how about you take this advice, never assume things because it makes an ass out of you and me. Or not. Guess those final thoughts will have to wait, because Josh released follow-up tweets around the time of after Bolt made his video, 
and then followed that up shortly after with a fucking trailer for a video talking about this situation, and now I feel obligated to cover these, as they're also infuriating in their own right. Well, the tweets are. As of recording this segment on April 7th, 2021, Joshua has yet to release the commentary he teased. But, I also want to keep my video as up to date as possible, so seriously, actually heck off and stop giving me stuff to cover here. Anyone who tries to bring up the Lindata drama will get blocked. Smooth. Yeah, if I had any doubts before about the outcome of this video, I now know for sure how this video is going to end up. And let me tell you, using Star Giant as your transphobia shield won't hold up in court either when she wants to dead name Lily Orchard. None of this would have happened if you just gave people the gay princesses they always wanted. Just saying. QUIET! Hey, Jerry, Pete, can you explain to Lily Orchard what exactly she did wrong here? Rule of three, Josh. Rule of three. What happened to Jerry, Pete? Because I miss him. Like, I don't like her either, but come on now. Trans women don't stop being women because you don't like them. You don't care to let it go, so why should I listen to you? And the funny thing is I can take criticism. Not lies. Then, show us. Again, you're the one that kept prancing around with your actions speak louder than words mantra, and yet, this thread exists. Where you're going to ignore the criticisms given to you again, because people are still bringing the criticisms to you when you have shown you weren't willing to listen before. Basically, what I'm trying to get at, Josh, is that you're literally trying to make the vicious cycle. The more you refuse to listen to the criticisms given to you, the more those very same criticisms will be brought up because they're still valid. Also, what has anyone lied about during the situation? The transphobic remarks? We have screenshots. The use of autism as your shield? We have screenshots and a video. The manipulative behavior? We still have screenshots. The aggressive and antagonistic responses to critique? Yes, you did that. The openly false flagging videos that talk about this? What do you think? No one's really lied about what you've done. People might have interpreted your actions poorly if I want to give that much benefit of doubt. But when you turn around and keep rescinding your stipulated apologies and doubling down on the behavior that got you into this situation in the first place, then I have a much harder time believing that to be the case. Plus, people have asked you to elaborate on what has been lied about you and you keep dodging that question. I will admit I may have come off as transphobic and manipulating, but here's something for you. This could easily be applied to you. No, no one else in this situation has been transphobic or manipulative. At worst, we've been harsh. Some of us admittedly overtly so. And no, not everyone who's come to you about the situation has been perfect either. But it's definitely not what you're accusing people of, and you definitely aren't giving us evidence of that being the case. I have gone through everything in this video, and there's still more. So if anyone should know, it should be me. When in reality it was giving criticism. I mean, yes, they were giving criticism. Unless you're talking about what you were trying to give, and in which case, was it? Like, even taking away the generously called accidental transphobia from the mix, your initial comments towards Luxter boiled down to cite your sources, which Luxter did, and your video is boring because it's simple, which, what really is Luxter supposed to take from that? make videos that aren't simple? Like, as I said towards the beginning of this shitfest, what is the criteria for a simple or complex video to you? Regardless of what it is, it's probably super subjective and there's no guarantee that Lucky sees eye to eye with you on it, as indicated by you saying that you were just giving an opinion in that thread. Further, if your criticism is in relation to people not letting things go or being repetitive with criticisms, I've already addressed those ad nauseum, so... Bah. I don't know what the fuck you want from me. But like I said, repeating the same criticism over and over again is destructive. How though? Because you say it is? It's almost like that you want me to suffer. You want me off the internet. Not all of you. Who exactly wants you off the internet? Like, who's this message for? But still here's something I like to give you, know when enough is enough. Guess we're back to the drop this subject rant. Also, just because I quote someone, doesn't mean I'm twisting it. I haven't even a clue of what this is referring to. No one, as far as I've noticed at least, has accused you of twisting anyone's words. If this is in reference to, like, a different thread regarding you and, say, Starter Card... No, Starter Card was telling you that it was stupid to make baseless accusations of Lindata, 
whilst you presume that she's doing the same to you. Fighting hypocritically only makes your actions more irredeemable, and when you sit there and acknowledge that you have no proof that she merely assumed things about you, nor that she is doing the exact same things people have been accusing you of doing, when you make these assumptions with no basis, they become less credible. At least some people are giving me a chance. I'm sorry, but this is vindictive. This whole drama is like with misanthropony, except I'm admitting my faults and adding something to the argument. Unfortunately, none of what you're adding paints you in a better light, I'm afraid. As for your I'm admitting my faults, like... I wish I could agree with you, Joshua. Really, I do. Regardless of how far we are into this video, and regardless of how angry I have gotten, I am not here to talk about this maliciously. I do want you to improve again. But with that said, past acknowledging what people have openly taken issue with you for, you haven't really been addressing the problematic behavior past an I'm sorry only if you never speak of this again. And yet you seem to think I'm but her. All I wanted was to try to become better. But instead, you want me to squirm. Intentional or not. Just let it go. I can't take it anymore. Just stop. Go away. Bye bye. So, yeah, this attitude doesn't help matters. You also continuing to imply that you plan to cover this drama only to give us a drama between Arlo and the Nintendo eShop doesn't help either. Yeah, watch the premiere to that shit. Most disappointing commentary of 2021, to be honest. So yeah, glad I waited on that shit. Never mind the aforementioned thought of addressing anything. Guess we're still in fair game mode. Furthermore, speaking of that addressing drama commentary, yeah, uh, Josh, that video is from like a year ago, so if you're gonna want to get on the my case for covering this drama about a month later right after it happened, uh, no you. Also, that shit was deadass clickbait. You knew people would tune in because of this drama, so yeah. We're not gonna cover the commentary he advertised, but in any case, this video was like three hours as it is, so maybe that's a good thing ultimately. Now let's go ahead and wrap things up. So, to recap, Joshua initially came in with a grudge against Luxter and then later accused everyone else of having a grudge, called Landata and Pink Robot trolls for effectively no reason past their use of text-to-speech while in his own videos uses text-to-speech, got on the Luxter's case for not citing sources on a video he does while also not citing his own sources, which is something Pink Robot had called him out on, got on numerous people's cases for repetition, even calling their criticisms redundant because of that, forgetting that when your biggest point is against repetition, you therein become repetitive, complained about nitpicks, which is in of itself a nitpick, never mind his constant arguments of semantics, got on a pink robot's case for not having a disclaimer while also never having a disclaimer in any of his videos, makes assumptions about people while getting angry at people he thinks are making assumptions about him, and just just generally, he's a fucking hypocrite, if you can't tell. Which is more frustrating when you realize that he doesn't give a shit about his hypocrisy, emphasized by his do-as-I-say-not-as-I-do mentality. He got very aggressive when called out for doing problematic actions, or just whenever he got things wrong, whenever someone came into a conversation they weren't a part of, and even when people remotely might have snapped back after his aggressive behavior initially sparked. This materializes in the forms of talking down to people condescendingly, typing in an albeit fairly common all capital letters, labeling other people as trolls or some other dehumanizing label, or threats of abuse of the YouTube flagging system to shut people up from furthering critique him, with one particularly egregious example stemming from him putting Pink Robot in a lose-lose situation, where she either deletes her video on him or he flags it down for her. This becomes particularly annoying when he does all of this antagonistic behavior and then asks for people to sugarcoat their counter-criticism because he has autism. He misgendered a trans girl in a bout of anger, fought that misgendering by saying she isn't her character and demanding proof that she's trans to begin with, called it only his opinion that a trans person isn't trans, and all of this based on her untrained vocals. Doubled down on that until called out by someone he deemed as a troll to which he started back backpedaling, using two other transgenders as a scapegoat in a classic I'm not a transphobe, I have trans friends excuse, half-assly apologizing for his mistake and then when the victim of his misgendering didn't accept the apology, he got angry, demanding that she did, attempted to manipulate her, and when called out on it, called everyone else manipulators, played the victim and even going as far as to gaslight others into believing his manipulative tactics were all in their heads. 
This gets incredibly bad when you realize that he said the trans girl wasn't a lady when confronted in private, before leaking that very same conversation to the public in an attempt to label her as abusive. He's defended pedophiles, gave half-assed apologies that he held hostage to get people to drop their criticisms of him, and then got angry when people didn't take those apologies seriously, tried getting the last word in every conversation he got in, which sparked most of these problems, and worst of all, he implied that Luxter wasn't musically inclined. With that singing voice? Get the fuck out of here. Luxter is very talented. Alright, alright. All japes and giggles aside, Joshua, I'm speaking directly to you this time. No one else. I want you to know about where I stand on this whole thing because I think you need to hear it from someone you've previously trusted. Regardless of how you feel about me now after this video, but please continue to hear me out. I am incredibly disappointed in you. In 2016, I legitimately saw what you were doing as ultimately unproblematic. You might not have made great content, but the hate that you got during that time period was ultimately uncalled for, and kind of overblown because you were you, the big bandwagon from 2011. People told you to stop making commentaries because they were subpar, and then got needlessly aggressive against you when they saw even the littlest of improvement. During that time period, I fought for you because I saw the treatment people gave you as unfair, and I still stand by that belief, even looking back and not thinking super positively about my commentaries defending you back then. But the thing is, that was 2016. You weren't doing too much, not a whole lot of people wanted to help you, and so it was up to someone to do so. I picked up those reins. You and I both know how it went from there. I checked some of your scripts when I had the time and energy, I kept up with what you were doing to make sure you worded yourself better, that you didn't make any huge mistakes, and I got people to lay off of you with my giant Joshua Tree commentary. By like, late 2017 or some shit though, you kinda turned around and didn't really accept the criticisms I gave to one of your videos particularly your glass of orange juice matte pat on the back video. I eventually wound up giving up since you didn't really want to listen to criticisms continuing on and only really wanted to be assured that I wasn't going to be doing commentaries on you, or at least that's how it felt. But I did what I could to help you improve, and fuck, I genuinely did think during 2017 that you did improve a little bit. I'll admit I stopped following your work as closely and kind of just let you do your own thing for a while, and because of that I must have missed something because you've devolved a ton. When you showed up as Nintendo Switch Gamer Dude, I started seeing some odd behavioral patterns that I personally had not seen from you before. You were more rude, more willing to do things out of sheer spite and make some arguments that no one in the right mind would think was valid. For instance, I remember the argument you had in favor of Nintendo's online service. It started with, the internet isn't that bad, followed by, just get better internet, followed by, and I'm not even kidding when I say this, an argument that a couple of people understood as stop being poor. And in case you had any doubts before, literally that aforementioned video where he covered an unrelated drama to this situation, he does it again. I know the Switch and Kickstand mode only can be played by one or two players, but you can still play in handheld mode wirelessly. Besides, even if you want to keep saying the tail needs to improve the online service, why not just get a better Wi-Fi router or use Ethernet? So yeah, nothing's changed. Why would it? You should remember what I'm talking about. Then there was that second video on Josh Scorcher that was aforementioned. When you called him a hypocrite for saying Ubisoft conferences were weird because he, and I quote, played D&D, had a pedophilic relationship with Ink Rose in the past, and likes hot sauce. For those in the back who need a refresher, wouldn't put it past them. It's okay, I think you're weird too. No really, you're in no position to judge since you hate hot sauce, had a pedophilic relationship with Ink Rose in the past, and played D&D. Hypocrisy? What's that? You got on the Luxter's case for putting the minority on a megaphone, as seen in these final thoughts. This is the problem I have with your commentaries. You ignore information you leave in to just discredit someone. Your Pokemon list chain commentary is a good example of this. I could probably understand why you leave them in. The only problem is you're only going after the experienced to white knight the inexperienced. This could work if it's just one game in the franchise. But you like to put the minority on a megaphone and have them shout the frustrations. Though, it makes sense why. You are below the thousandth mark and think sticking to minorities is a good idea. Though Josh seems to like it. And then you called me lazy because I'm American. And to continue on this path of proof, here you go. Japan works the hardest. America is lazy. Doodle Tones happens to be a North American cause and that has different subjectivity and effort. 
So in Japan, you have no choice but to work hard. By the way, I would love to see him say that this video is lazy. Just saying, if I'm lazy because I'm American, uh, this is a three hour long commentary. Your move. These arguments sounded like something a troll would say. When I know you're not, I wouldn't have done a co-op commentary with someone who I genuinely thought was a troll. I also, as mentioned before, noticed a relapse in behavior with how you treat commentaries done on you. Instead of knowing when to drop something, you make it a point to get the last word, hoping those who oppose you can see to the argument you're making, which we both agreed was the problem with the Joshua Tree chain of 2016. Admitting to being incorrect is hard. I get it, it often is. But when someone makes a good point, you gotta let go instead of trying to find any minuscule fault in what their point was making to discredit it and hold like a simple word that doesn't correlate with your dictionary bible. And obviously no, not every critique is valid. I cover a lot of people on my channel who cover me because, well at this point it just kind of fuels the job really. But I often have people make a few good points here or there that I don't cover because I can admit to when the mistakes have been made when they've actually been made. That's why Confessions exists. That's why my three apologies to Just a Robot exist. That's why my apology to Dylan existed. That's why my apology to Megatube existed. Not to mention all of the times I've apologized to TP in private for a video I made in 2016. Like, it's not easy, but it needs to happen. Because doubling down and trying to get the last word in everything might make you fall into a situation you don't want to be in, like accidentally being transphobic towards someone. Yes, I did say accidental, mainly because I don't want to believe you're actually transphobic, at least not until further notice. But look, the point is, ultimately, I think what needs to happen is that you actually need to apologize for your actions. Don't put any stipulations on your apology. None of this I'll only apologize if people drop it shit, because if you actually mean it, they won't keep bringing it up against you. Well, some might, it's the internet, but that'll be the vocal minority, ultimately. People will accept your apology if you mean it, or at the very least, people won't nearly be as ready to crucify you for this mistake. I think that's a start to get back on the right track. I've seen you improve, so I know you can. But it's gonna be up to you if you actually choose to improve this time. Your habits die hard mentality be damned. Take care, Joshua. I want to expect better from you.